viewers, good morning. This is a public panel interview by the Judicial and Bar Council of Candidates for the position of Legal Education Board Chairperson or as regular member representing the Integrated Bar of the Philippines or as regular member representing the law students sector. But before proceeding, let's have first the centennial prayer for the courts. Almighty God, we stand in your holy presence as our supreme judge. We humbly beseech you to bless and inspire us so that what we think, say, and do will be in accordance with your will. Enlighten our minds, strengthen our spirit, and fill our hearts with fraternal love, wisdom, and understanding, so that we can be effective channels of truth, justice, and peace. In our proceedings today, guide us in the path of righteousness for the fulfillment of your greater glory. Amen. Your Honours, Again, good morning. The yes, panel of interviewers for this for today will be the following. The Honorable Justice Jose Catral Mendoza, Chairperson of the Judicial Bar Council Executive Committee and regular member representing the retired members of the Supreme Court. The Honorable Judge Toribio E. Ilao Jr., regular member representing the private sector. The Honorable Justice Noel Jimenez Tiham, regular member representing the academe. And the Honorable Judge Franklin J. de Monteverde, regular member representing the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Your Honors, the candidates for interview this morning are the following. Attorney May Elaine T. Bacan, and Attorney Pauline Grace T. Bonyol Alfuente, who are both mm -hmm. vying for the position as Legal Education Board Chairperson or as regular member representing the Integrated Bar of the Philippines and the Active Law Practitioners. May I request the candidates to please raise your right hand so that I can administer the oath? Do you swear to tell the truth? the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this public panel interview by the Judicial and Bar Council? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I do. So help you God. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Your Honors, the first for interview this morning is Attorney May Elaine T. Batan. And the first to interview the candidate will be the Honorable Judge Franklin J. de Monteverde. Judge okay, sir. Thank you, Attorney Ed. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good morning, Attorney Batan. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, how are you today? I'm feeling fine, Your Honor. A bit anxious, so to speak, but uh, all is well, Your Honor. Uh, you applied for some post before? No, Your Honor. This is, uh, this actually is your first time. time. Yes, Your oh, Honor. Okay. okay. Now, you are 42 years old and uh, presently the law professor for, uh, at the University of San Jose Recoletos for 15 years. Is that correct? That is, that is correct, Your Honor. I am also, aside from being a law professor, Your Honor, I am also the assistant dean um, for the School of Law of the University, Your Honor. Okay. How long have you been the assistant dean? I have been an assistant dean since 2005, Your Honor, upon my admission to, to the bar, Your Honor, up to the present. Okay. And uh, as an assistant dean, did you actually teach law at the University of San Jose Recoletos or mainly overseeing, helping the dean oversee the, the operation of the law school? In compliance then of uh, the requirements for being able to teach law uh, at the time, Your Honor, upon my assumption as Assistant Dean in 2005, Your Honor, I was constrained to do administrative work 
and uh, after uh, three years and, and handled um, undergraduate subjects um, uh, related to law, Your Honor. And after three years, um, so that was in 2008 up to the present, I began to handle uh, law subjects in the School of Law already, Your Honor. Uh, so from 2008 to the present, yes, or yes. at least uh, 12 years. Yes, Your Honor. You taught uh, around that time, your honor. Uh, around the time. You were actually teaching, yes, your honor. Okay, now going to your uh, medical records, or rather, before that, going over your, your credentials, most of the work that you rendered were not uh, administrative in nature. Ad uh, you, you were the legal consultant, legal consultant, security officer, resident partner, in-house counsel. I was in the practice of uh, law, Your Honor. I uh -huh. have a law firm, uh, Your Honor. I am a part resident partner for Divina Law here in Cebu. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, uh, parallel to that, I have been uh, also working for um, then as a consultant right now for um, LGUs, but in 2016 to 2019, I served as uh, the executive secretary and chief of staff of the incumbent mayor of uh, the city of Mandawe at the time, Your Honor. But did you actually have people under you to supervise and, to, ad uh, yes, and to perform administrative functions? In the School of Law, Your Honor, definitely, um, there were staff um, and, and um, personnel under me in, in the department. And um, with regards to the supervision, uh, handling the law office, Your Honor, entails um, overseeing um, the office, not only for, for um, catering to the needs of our clients. And uh, most especially in my stint as the chief of staff, um, of, of the mayor, I was heavily exposed to uh, administrative uh, matters um, and, and also um, legal, political, and governmental affairs at the time, Your Honor, which expanded not only within the, um, uh, within the local government unit, but also um, beyond, um, but also in relation to other local government units, um, the barangays and um, the, the employees within um, the LGU, Your Honor. Okay. Now, Attorney Bathan, you have four pending cases filed against you, which mainly focused on violations of graft and corrupt practices law and grave misconduct. Do you think uh, this will take uh, taint your aspiration to be appointed in the lab, considering in the lab, considering that these cases speak of one's integrity and independence? Well, it is unfortunate, uh, Your Honor, that um, there are cases um, against me with the Ombudsman, but uh, truth be told, and if I may uh, be candid, Your Honor, these are politically motivated cases that were filed back then um, as against the incumbent mayor. And me being the chief of staff, I was unfortunately dragged and caught in the in the crossfire. This actually merely involved on um, the discussion of the then mayor in the exercise of his executive function to transfer um, a, a department head, Your Honor, um, to another office considering his political affiliations and alliances back then, Your Honor, to his running opponent, um, okay. who was also the previous mayor. So um, uh, I never had a hand or authority and it was not in any way directly related to my official functions, Your Honor. So I really do not see um, it affecting um, my, my work ethics and, and my commitment to public service if I would be given the chance, Your Honor. Oh. Uh, you are referring to these, these four cases, no? Yes, Your Honor. But, Those these, are are, cases, but these are all still pending. As of the moment, uh, Your Honor, those are, yes, pending, um, Your Honor. We were hoping to, to have it expedited uh, and resolved, Your Honor, but I believe that the pandemic um, really limited the, the functions of the Office of the Ombudsman, Your Honor. Okay. 
is there a possibility that this will be resolved before uh, before the uh, before our shortlisting? I am I am hopeful, uh, Your Honor, that um, it will be uh, it will be resolved. Um, um, however, as I I, I said, uh, Your Honor. Um, that the case really had nothing to do with my official function. Okay. My capacity then. Oh. But whatever it is, these cases are still pending yes, for resolution. Honor. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Now you are applying for the lab chair person as well as representing correct, for the IBP. And um, possible, Your Honor, also as um, representative for the active law practitioners as well, Your Honor. Oh. Okay. How do you see yourself as the chairperson of the lab and what kind of a leader will you be? Will you have a moral ascendancy over the other members or stakeholders? And uh, moreover, do you have the moral persuasion over them? Well, as, as, as what you've mentioned, and I would like to, to use the term stakeholders, uh, Your Honor, um, I believe it doesn't have to be imposition of your moral ascendancy, but rather being able to work with and um, achieve the goals that we would set for the legal education, Your Honor. And I believe that imposing one's moral ascendancy is not the key, but rather being able to um, seek the support and the cooperation of all, uh, of, all this, of all these stakeholders. I have been working with the Philippine Association of Law Schools. I have been very active with the IBP. I have um, also worked with, through both um, agencies, Your Honor, with, with the Supreme Court. And uh, I believe that cooperation and collaboration um, is the key you know, to be able to, to achieve the goals for the betterment of, of the legal education. So my brand of leadership, um, Your Honor, would embrace um, such kind of um, motivation um, in okay, in Attorney English. Batan. Yes, you are an assistant dean. Yes, Your Honor. Now, how I must believe that you have a good or not a good, but a a a relation has been developed among you, the law practitioners and the law deans. I believe so, Your Honor. I believe. So. And how they do they look up to you? Do you earn the respect? Because in order to be a chairperson, you must have earned the respect of the stakeholder, this uh, ALPS and this PALS, the Philippine Law Schools and the legal practitioners, with, law with, practitioners rather. Uh, with all humility, Your Honor, I would like to believe so that I have established enough rapport to gain not just the respect, Your Honor, but the support of my peers both in the IBP and in the Philippine Association of Law Schools, Your Honor. Okay. So what is your philosophy of legal education then? Well, legal education does not have to be limited within the four corners of um, the, the, the classroom, Your Honor, or mere study of the law. Making lawyers out of our law students should be focused on preparing them for actual law practice. It should mm -hmm. go beyond theory. And with the trend right now, we should be able to produce not just lawyers for the Philippines, but lawyers who are capable to do cross-border practices and, and do transnational transactions with, with other countries also, Your Honor. Okay. I would want that. Now, uh, what pedagogic methodology of teaching law will you espouse? the Socratic method or the case method? I, I would want it to be a blended um, learning or method still, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. While Socratic method is an age-old method of teaching mm -hmm. in law school, I think that the output-based or the outcomes-based method um, really has the benefits, especially given during these times when online um, learning has been encouraged and has even limited the, the method of teaching, uh, Your Honor, I believe that the trend should also lead towards the output and the outcomes-based method, Your Honor, if we are to teach and prepare our students, not just to learn what the law is, 
but to appreciate and apply the law, Your Honor. Okay. Now, how would you encourage outcome-based education as a policy for legal education? Outcomes-based um, policy and method of teaching, uh, Your Honor, can actually uh, be done in several ways. One mm -hmm. is to provide the students an avenue for real applications of, of, of the law, not just mere studying the case or uh, coming up with a theoretical case and have the application uh, of the law itself. Another would also be immersing the students themselves in actual law practice that would make them better appreciate uh, the application um, and the wisdom um, of the law and the framers of the law and how it is applied uh, in real practice, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. What is meant by academic freedom? And what are the parameters? Academic freedom, as I understand it, Your Honor, is giving the higher educational institutions the right and the, the autonomy and the authority to determine who to teach, what to teach, how it will be taught, as well as um, the qualifications for, for their admission, as well as their uh, retention, Your Honor. However, the, the concept of academic freedom is not to mean that the state no longer has the authority to regulate so long as the state does not control um, uh, these higher uh, educational institutions in the imposition um, of their policies and that they also uh, comply with the minimum standards set forth by, by the state, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Republic Act 7662 was, or rather, was established to uh, and known to be the Legal Education Reform Act of 1993. Now, should you ever be appointed as uh, the chair of the LEP, what amendments or reforms would you propose? I was actually asked yesterday, Your Honor, and one of the things that I did mention um, as one of the reforms that we would want for the Legal Education Board is indeed the amendment of um, the Legal Education Reform Act. I believe that um, the, the, the composition of the board itself um, mm -hmm. should include a member of the Supreme Court, uh, Your Honor, being a major stakeholder um, in the legal education and in the legal profession per se. So as I, right now, as you know, it's only the, the Commission on Higher Education that sits as an ex-official uh, chairperson, but I believe that the presence and the involvement and the representation of the Supreme Court is a very essential and necessary uh, composition of the board. If reforms and, um, and improvements of the standards, not just of the legal education, and the, uh, but also of the legal profession is, uh, is to be made because I really think that both um, should work hand in hand together, the admission uh, and the education, as well as the practice of our uh, profession, Your Honor. And given the limitation of, of the Legal Education Board, um, um, I think what should be um, reform and inculcated is to clarify the role of the Legal Education Board in terms of the conferment uh, of the degree so that there will be no ambiguity between the Commission on Higher Education and uh, the Legal Education Board as um, two different institutions that regulate uh, education in the Philippines, LEB solely having the authority of legal education in the country. Okay. Now, one of the powers and functions of the board is to adopt a system of continuing legal education. Do you think this conflicts with the mandatory MCLE, continuing legal education, I, I initiated believe, by the Supreme Court? I believe it does, Your Honor. And as a matter of fact, it has been well clarified by the decision uh, in the Pimentel case, uh, Your Honor. Um, considering that 
the Legal Education Board and the authority of the Legal Education Board is confined in education, determining the curriculum, the standards, and the accreditation of, um, of law schools, Your Honor. However, consistent with the provisions of the Constitution, granting the authority of the practice admission and the practice of law to the Supreme Court, uh, Your Honor, and the continuing legal education being part um, of the practice of law already of the lawyers, Your Honor. I believe it no longer falls part of the jurisdiction or authority of the lab. Well, so would you call for its revocation or uh, whatever? I am. That, uh, that particular provision? Perhaps, Your Honor, um, it should be clarified um, and, and explicitly uh, lay down the parameters because I believe it does encroach on the authority uh, of the Supreme Court, uh, Your Honor, to regulate and determine the parameters of the practice of law, Your Honor, already. Okay, let's go to your cell end. And this is my observation. You type in your PDS a wrong, hopefully it's a wrong figure, huh? amounting to 29 million more or less. Uh, more. 29 million 390,911.92 to be exact as your savings in China Bank, when in fact it should only be 2,939,091.92 as per the bank certificate okay. issued by the China Bank. I, I, that, I will admit to, uh, to that typographical uh, error, Your Honor. I will look into it, but most definitely I do not have that amount of uh, money, Your Honor, my 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 cash in bank with China Bank is the one reflected and issued in the certification by the bank, Your Honor. Apologies. Who prepares your uh, salon? Um, I I I will admit, Your Honor, I had the secretary to to do that, but I did oversee and and check on the 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 figures myself. Uh, you failed my to check the figures. I believe I did, Your Honor. Oh. Had it been otherwise, it could have. Uh, uh, the members of the board, the the council would have uh, thought otherwise. Yes, Your Honor. So we, uh, next time, be careful. I will, Your Honor. Thank uh, you, Your Honor. Okay. Now, one of the objectives of the LEB, as mandated by the law, is to increase awareness among members of the legal profession of the needs of the poor deprived and oppressed sectors of society. Is this really important? And if so, what can you do to realize this objective better? I believe it is very important, uh, Your Honor, because that is really consistent with the objectives also of the IBP and even the Supreme Court with regards to the legal profession. And what better way to, to, to mold these kinds of lawyers but to immerse them as when, when they are law students um, mm -hmm. themselves, Your Honor. We have always been teaching our students that when you become lawyers, those who have less in life should have more of the law, and that we have always been encouraging um, lawyers to actively participate in IDP's um, legal aid program and even to do pro bono uh, uh, work, Your Honor. And such value should already be inculcated even when they are law students, Your Honor. And it is important that um, as early in, in their life as they are learning the law, Your Honor, they be exposed to the needs of the society, which I think would also be a factor to inspire them to pursue becoming uh, lawyers, good lawyers uh, at that in the future, Your Honor. And uh, I think one of the things and one of the ways uh, by which we can be able, be able to realize that when they are law students, Your Honor, is to, to enhance one, our um, student practice rule, and, and second, to really encourage law schools to open legal aid clinics, Your Honor, partner with um, IBP and, and, and immerse them in jail decongestion uh, programs, Your Honor, which could also be in partnership with with the Supreme Court, Your Honor, so that they can be exposed to the realities of life and the realities of law practice, Your Honor. Now, scanning your credentials, you are engaged or you have been engaged in various organizations, either as an academician or as a law practitioner. Yeah. And this kind of work is very stressful. How do you cope with it? 
I don't find it stressful at all, um, Your Honor, although sometimes the demands um, could be tasking uh, and, and, and daunting. But in all honesty, Your Honor, I like it. I like being um, involved with it because it, it keeps you grounded um, when it comes to, to, to law practice, uh, Your Honor. It keeps you all, it, get, it lets you appreciate being a lawyer, actually, um, because you're exposed to different people, to different fields of law. Um, to, 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 various, to various sectors, uh, Your Honor. Honestly, I really do not find it stressful. <laughs> uh, you do not find it stressful. But your lab results show otherwise. <laughs> um, huh? Perhaps, Your Honor, but there are, there are downsides to, to it, naman, Your Honor. But uh, I think perhaps in time, <laughs> on that aspect, Your Honor, pacing, pacing things for me, Your Honor. You were certified to be essentially normal. What do you mean by it? essentially normal, physically fit for employment without restrictions? But there is that adjective uh, phrase that essentially normal. Ano yan? I believe. Hindi ka normal masyado. Not necessarily, or maybe because I'm empowered, and and maybe because I have a bit of a strong personality. Um, uh, when it comes to to dealing with people, because I have been, uh, like you said, um, and as you have correctly assessed, I have been very involved um, in several organizations. And I have also, as a matter of fact, not just served in a regular capacity, but I have also risen to, to take in some posts and responsibilities um, with such position. But I believe that despite my involvement, my, my exposure, I have led a considerably balanced and, and normal life. Um, I, I go out, I travel, I have fun with my friends. I, I also go out with my, I really make time with my family. And perhaps that is what is meant with essentially normal. What family are you talking about? You are single at 42. My, my Yes, Your Honor. My family, I am oh. referring to my mother and my siblings, Your Honor. Ah, okay. Do you have plans of settling down? Definitely, Your Honor. Well, now, I... now, because you are a domineering, from, from what I have seen, you are domineering. I don't... And as a leader, you are that, diba? Tama. Tama ko? As a leader, Your Honor, yes. But uh, when it comes to my personal life, Your Honor, I am submissive. I would like to believe. So you, you dominate your subordinates as a leader. Yes. How would you earn the respect? And in uh, vis a vis your relationship with the law schools, deans of other law schools and uh, law practitioners, how would you equate this? Would you earn their respect if dominate. you domi try to dominate them? I think dominate. The term or the word dominate, Your Honor, I believe it's such a very um, a, a heavy term, Your Honor. I think um, I would like to believe leading them um, towards a common goal does not necessarily mean dominating uh, dominating them, Your mm -hmm. Honor. I may appear to be strong, but uh, not, domin domin not domineering, I think. Okay. Uh, watch out for this, huh? Oh. Well, you are essentially normal, yet this blood chemistry results show that you your triglycerides, VLDL, cholesterol, HDL ratio are high. Kaya mm -hmm. essentially normal ka lang. Working on it, Your Honor. Uh, working on it. And this may hamper your work as a as any of those positions which you are aspiring for. I have always had myself checked um, regularly by uh, our cardiologist, Your Honor, and I am happy to say I have not been prescribed any maintenance um, of okay. any uh, As a parting shot, uh, work for the resolution of the cases still pending against I you. I will this, may, uh, this may work um, not in your favor. Huh? I will, Your Honor. Yes, Your uh, Honor. Sige, sige. That was my last question. Uh, and my last uh, statement, Attorney Batan. Huh? Okay. Uh, thank you for your time and good luck. Thank you, Pa. Thank you very much, uh, Your Honor, Justice de Monteverde. Yeah, thank Honorable you, Attorney Justice, Anne. Uh, Honorable Justice Noel Jimenez-Tiham has now the floor. Thank you, Attorney Anne.
Good morning, Professor Elaine. Good morning, po, Your Honor. Can you tell us briefly the constitutional basis of the creation of the Legal Education Board? Well, uh, Your Honor, it is the policy of, of the state, Your Honor, to, to regulate and, um, and promote education um, in, in, in the Philippines, Your Honor, consistent, consistent to that. Um, it has, in fact, been made part of the policies of um, Republic Act 7662, uh, Your Honor, um, as, as, as stated in, in, in the declaration of the policies of um, the Legal Education Reform Act, Your Honor. The creation of the Legal Education Board is an act of the state in the exercise of what, Professor Elaine? Police power, in the exercise of its police power, um, Your Honor. What kind of power does the state exercise with respect to legal education, in your own words? Well, um, in connection in relation to, do, to the power of the state um, to exercise police power, Your Honor, with regards to um, regulating uh, legal education, legal education being and, and the practice leading, which leads the practice of um, the law profession, Your Honor, plays an essential role in, in nation building and, and um, in, in, in building the society in, in general, Your Honor, such that the state has a lawful interest to ensure that the standards of legal education are, are met by higher educational institutions offering um, the courses, Your Honor. In your opinion, what is the purpose, what is the mission of law schools in the Philippines? I think the law, the mission of the law schools, Your Honor, which we do imbibe and I do actually um, take take into heart, Your Honor, is not just to produce lawyers, Your Honor, um, but it's really to 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 produce competent, able, emphatic um, lawyers who are morally and ethically upright as well, Your Honor. In your own words, what do you think is the objective or mission of the Legal Education Board? The objective to me of the Legal Education Board is to come up with a minimum set of standards um, in legal education, Your Honor, that would ensure that higher education institutions offering um, courses related to, to law and um, um, or, or related to, to, to bachelor, then Bachelor of Laws and now uh, Juris Doctor, Your Honor, um, would ensure that they're able to produce graduates, not just competent to fit the bar, uh, to, to, to take the bar and pass the bar and be admitted to the Supreme Court, Your Honor, but most, more importantly, graduates who learn the knowledge of the law and its application and who have a clear appreciation of the law and its um, uh, application, Your Honor, in, in real life settings, Your Honor. In 1982, then Minister of National Defense uh, Enrile entered into what is known as the Soto Enrile Agreement, which was uh, succeeded in 1989 with a similar agreement known as the Abueba Ramos Agreement. To your recollection, to what do this accord pertain? Um, in all honesty, I, I, I believe that had something to do with um, the restriction on the University of, of the Philippines. Uh, with regards to the entry of um, the police in the premises of, of um, the University of the Philippines, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, and um, restricting them from uh, arresting um, students who do and undertake protests and um, expression of, of their views and opinions, Your Honor. 
the agreements specifically delineated that prior notification must be obtained from the UP administration by the military or the police before they could conduct operations inside the UP campus. My question is, in your opinion, is that constitutional? In, in, in my opinion, in my opinion, Your Honor, I think it is I, I restricting them from 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 uh, entering without any valid just as in any um, place of abode or or any institution, Your Honor, the presence of, of the police or the presence of the military, which in turn may intrude on the fundamental freedoms either of the institution or the individuals present inside that institution um, should should be valid and 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 and, and should be um, limited uh, limited also uh, your honor so to some extent I believe it is constitutional considering that um, permission um, should first be sought and um, there should be a badge of legality or val validity of their entry uh, your honor because um, these institutions, um, whether public or private, also have rights of their own, Your Honor, which they can also demand and in a way would restrict the other from exercising it. So you're saying it's constitutional. <clears throat> One of the provisions of that agreement is that no search warrant or even a warrant of arrest can be served to any student of the University of the Philippines or faculty or employee or invited participant. In other words, a third party invited inside the premises. The search warrant or the warrant of arrest cannot be served without prior notification to the UP president, chancellor, or the dean of the UP. I believe As lawyer, is it normal to notify a person before he's arrested that there is a warrant of arrest coming? Is it normal for an establishment to be notified in advance that there will be a search warrant that will be executed? I, I, I find it rather not normal um, indeed, Your Honor, to seek um, the not, uh, to, to, to notify uh, the head of office of, of that institution um, prior to the implementation of a of a search warrant, Your Honor, um, and and what what is I, I as a matter does, does it have anything to do with academic freedom? You think the agreements? I believe your... I believe so to some extent. Uh, to some extent, Your Honor, um, in in actual in actual practice, um, although uh, the agreement specifically did mention about the University of the Philippines. In, in actual practice, even in, in regular and private uh, institutions, Your Honor, um, oftentimes the police do um, render and conduct coordination with a head of office prior to the uh, implementation of a, a search warrant as against either a student or um, as against an employee of that uh, particular institution. I do not find that rather uh, unusual um, in terms of actual, in terms of actual practice, Your Honor, what I think though is that it should not be confined only to the University of the Philippines as an institution. If it were to be applied, um, it has to be applied as well, similarly to other educational institutions, if that is the case, and if it were to be consistent with academic freedom, Your Honor. In effect, that agreement made the UP. Uh, similar to a Diliman Republic, a separate republic, they became, demilitarized, demilitarized zone. You cannot enter without prior permission. Now, the other day, Secretary Lorenzana oh, revoke and cancel the agreement. Is that constitutionally permissible? Well, considering that um, perhaps it was an, 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 an exercise of uh, her authority, um, as Chancellor of Youth of the University of, of the, the Philippines, uh, 
of the University of the Philippines, Your Honor. However, considering that um, if it had a badge of and an and, and authority, if her revocation was not an ultra vire act, Your Honor, and it was um, sanctioned upon, then I believe it was constitutional, Your Honor, unless she was acting on her own. But if there is no, the critics said it cannot be revoked because there is no exit clause in the agreement. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with the contention that a, for whatever nature, whether it's a contract or whether it's a, a policy, that just because there is no exit provisions um, in a particular document or agreement, Your Honor, um, perpetually it can be invoked um, without any uh, intrusion or intervention, Your Honor. I do not subscribe to that. The other day, Congress, the House of Representatives, passed House Bill 8149, institutionalizing a new Filipino gesture of respect, goodwill, and praise by placing the palm yes. of the right hand over the center of the chest while lowering one's head with eyes closed or looking downwards. Uh, obviously, it was intended to do away with the shaking of hands. Does it violate any constitutional right? If it becomes a law, will it violate any constitutional right of Filipinos? Is it constitutional if it becomes a law? Well, customs and traditions can turn into um, legislation, as, as we know, uh, Your Honor. However, we have to temper it as well with um, other rights, such as the, the right um, to religion and um, the right to act in accordance to his or her own uh, belief, uh, his or her own belief, Your Honor. Um, just as in, in cases where uh, decided by the Supreme Court already, Your Honor, where due to, to religious considerations, Your Honor, um, a, a student may not be required to, to put his hand over um, her chest or his chest during the flag ceremonies, um, Your Honor. Uh, I believe it has, we, we, we can apply by the same analogy that um, requirement, uh, Your Honor, because I believe there are other ways by which we can show um, respect uh, to another person, Your Honor. I think so long as there are no um, criminal sanctions involved um, in the imposition of such gesture, Your Honor, I don't think it is unconstitutional, Your Honor. Under the Constitution, the Supreme Court has rulemaking power, promulgate rules concerning the practice of law, as well as the integrated bar under Article 8 of the Constitution. Is it constitutionally permissible for the Supreme Court to form a body that will regulate legal education and place it under the supervision and control of the Supreme Court? So long as the intention, I believe, Your Honor, will relate not to um, the policies or the standards or the accreditation of the law schools, Your Honor, but that one that is inclined with regards to the practice uh, of law, Your Honor, I think the Supreme Court is authorized to, to create such body and even such policies, Your Honor. Is legal education the same as the practice of law? That seems to be the consequence of the answer you gave. I, 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 it is my position, Your Honor, it is not because um, legal education is still the study or still pertains to the study of the law, Your Does Honor. Does the Supreme Court have jurisdiction over legal education, the study of law? It is, I, I believe the decision in Pimentel has clearly defined the parameters um, of the, the authority of the Legal Education Board, which is legal education in itself, and the Supreme Court, which is the admission and the practice uh, of, of, uh, of law, Your Honor. So it, 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 
though there are two, these two are totally uh, a different, um, in my opinion, uh, Your Honor. Legal education is merely the study uh, of the law, getting the necessary knowledge that would um, give you a, a, a the, 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 the qualifications to be able to be admitted and to practice um, the, the law profession, Your Honor, practice law rather. The Legal Education Board has jurisdiction over legal education, but not over the practice of law. Do you agree with that? I agree with you, Your Honor. Now, there are proponents that the Legal Education Board now should be placed under the supervision and control of the Supreme Court. Question, is that constitutionally permissible? It may be constitutionally per uh, it is maybe constitutionally permissible, Your Honor, considering that there is a very thin um, line separating legal education, admission, and the practice of law, Your Honor. That is why um, when I was asked what possible amendments should I um, propose um, to the Legal Education Reform Act, I have readily um, stated that. A member of the Supreme Court should, in fact, sit as an ex officio member of the Legal Education Board, Your Honor. The Supreme Court mainly being a stakeholder um, of the Legal Education, Your Honor. You, you did not answer the question. The question is, is it constitutionally permissible for the lab to be placed under the control and supervision of the Supreme Court? Is it a yes or a no? I believe it's a no. Um, Your Honor, because the, the the policy making body, which is the Legal Education Board, um, exercises executive um, functions, Your Honor, and the Constitution has been very explicit under Article 8 on the authority of the Supreme Court, which is to regulate the admission to the bar and the practice of law, Your Honor. And if you look at where legal education stands, Your Honor, it does not come in as admission to the bar and practice of lawyer on it. Which uh, asks the question, is there a constitutional infirmity in the law creating the Legal Education Board where the chairperson and the members have to be vetted by the Judicial and Bar Council? which is under the supervision of the Supreme Court. And it says, without prior authorization of the Supreme Court. While it is a constitutional infirmity, if it is an executive, if the Legal Education Board is an executive entity uh, dealing with legal education, why is it that it is necessary for the members before they're appointed to be vetted by the Judicial and Bar Council, when our mandate is to vet appointments to the judiciary? Well, that, that, that brings me to me wanting to... to, to I, I did notice that, Your Honor, and I think um, this actually makes the Legal Education Board as an institution um, a class of its own, unique in itself, uh, in a sense that the Supreme Court has a vested interest in the operations of the legal education, considering that it is a stakeholder um, in, in the legal education because they would be the ones to admit and retain and determine the standards of those who are to practice to practice um, the law profession. And I think that while it is unique, uh, I think it is valid, and I don't think there is a constitutional uh, infirmity uh, on, on, on that note, um, because still, while they perform executive functions, um, but they perform executive functions, Your Honor, these are um, lawyers who, are, are mem who will become members of uh, the bar, are also agents of the court, and are also part of the judiciary, uh, Your Honor, just as the IBP. Um, is connected also to the Supreme Court and by logic, since 
the, the first step to being members to the IBP or to becoming lawyers is, is becoming a law student. Therefore, I think um, I, I, I still find it consistent, Your Honor. You're saying there's an umbilical cord that connects legal education with the Supreme Court. When you said that the Supreme Court has nothing to do with legal education, but admission to the practice of law. Figuratively, Your Honor. That's why, that's why I, 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 I would want to propose that the Supreme Court should sit in um, as, as an ex officio member in the board. To be okay. consistent to that. The last question is this. In your opinion, should the Legal Education Board close down low schools whose graduates consistently fail in the bar examinations, in your opinion? Uh, um, there has to be a procedure. There has to be a procedure, Your Honor, yes. And um, I, I, I believe that in the event that a, a but not right, I, I I will say yes, Your Honor, but not right away. Um, I think due process and opportunity for the law school to to impose and implement reforms um, to better their performance should be had, and only until um, failure to do so, um, only then should these law schools be advised to suspend um, their operations. Uh, until they can comply with the minimum standards. Perhaps not necessarily revoke their grant, but perhaps just suspend their permit. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Elaine, and good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor. This is Tiham. We now turn over the conduct of the interview to Honorable Judge Toribio E. E. Lau, Jr. Excuse me. <coughs> All right, thank you, Attorney Ann. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Assistant Dean. Good morning, Your Honor. All right, uh, I'll just give you a 30 second trip. Uh, take a deep breath and, uh, and so that uh, you can relax for a bit and uh, smile. Okay. So, Dean, Assistant Dean, what's your story? Your Honor, I am 42 years old. I am single. I am the youngest in, in our family. I have um, graduated from the University of San Carlos, uh, Bachelor of Science in Accountancy, and uh, I finished my Bachelor of Laws with the University of San Jose Recoletos. Immediately upon my uh, admission to the bar in 2005, I became the assistant dean uh, of, of the School of Law. Two years after that, I served in several capacities of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines up until I became the IBP governor for Eastern Visayas in, 20, in 2015. I am a law practitioner, Your Honor, and at present, I am a resident partner for Divina Law for the, our Cebu uh, Law Office, Your Honor. And uh, I also served uh, previously for one term, that's three years, as chief of staff for the city government of Mandawe, Your Honor. Right now, um, I'm back to, to law practice. I'm back. I'm, I'm still with the academe. Consistent among all what I have involved myself in um, is my involvement with the academe, Your Honor. Aretha, how is singleness uh, a blessedness? <laughs> Quoting St. Paul. Well... Being single, I believe, um, doesn't necessarily have to be a choice. I am not closing my doors to finding a, a partner uh, in the future if it is meant for me. But uh, right now, it is giving me the opportunity, uh, Your Honor, to do more things than most because of my limited um, responsibility to, to my family. Thus, I am able to channel um, some of my responsibilities with my involvement in other organizations um, and in the academic institution uh, as well, Your Honor. And I am liking it so far, Your Honor. And uh, why did you move from uh, University of San Carlos to University of San Jose Recoletos? Uh, well, Your Honor, unfortunately, at that time, uh, my involve my too much involvement then with my extracurricular activities, having served 
as the national president of the Philippine Junior JC took it all over my law studies at the time, Your Honor, in San Carlos. So I was forced to, to transfer to San Jose Recoletos then, Your Honor. When I was it, in third year. University of San Carlos is being run by what uh, religious order? Is it run I, by a religious order? So San Carlos is run by the Society of the Divine Word, Your Honor, SDD. USJR mm -hmm. is run by the Order of Augustinian Recollects, OAR. Um, all right, thank you. And uh, at present, you are a consultant of the local government units of Lilu and Talisay and the 5th Legislative District of Cebu City. You are also the in-house counsel and assistant dean of the University of San Jose Recoletos. You are a solo practitioner and a resident partner of Divina. And lastly, you are a radio, radio anchor. Yes. <laughs> if appointed, you still have time to discharge the duties of the Legal Education Board member. It will definitely be my priority, uh, of course, Your Honor. And um, given a bigger responsibility might entail giving up some of my um, responsibilities that may run in conflict with my duties as a member or chairman of the Legal Education Board, Your Honor. Priorities have to be set, Your Honor. Reorg the priorities by then. As a resident partner of the Vina Law, do you have uh, any working relationship with the said uh, law office? Directly, directly, Your Honor, um, we, we, we operate. There is a law office um, for Divina Law here in Cebu, which we manage, uh, Your Honor, and um, cases that are passed on. We accept cases here, Your Honor, for, for the firm and um, cases accepted also in Manila for which um, hearings, arbitrations, representations are needed. Um, we do that uh, as well, Your Honor. So directly with uh, Attorney Milo. Um, as our managing partner, Your Honor. But with respect to sharing, that's in case of a handling case or a accepting case, a retainership. It's, it's the same procedure as um, operating uh, the law firm, Your Honor. We do have a monthly um, fee, Your Honor, as well as our uh, share uh, on the time charges for the services that we render to the clients of the firm, Your Honor. But how would you describe yourself as a professor? As a professor, Your Honor, um, I do tough love, but consider it, uh, consider it uh, most of the time. I do immerse myself uh, on, on the level or on the situations of, of the students, especially now uh, during the pandemic and adjustments had to, had to be made and I had to be very cautious and conscious of, of the needs of, of our students, not just on uh, online learning and online teaching, but more particularly on, on mental health, Your Honor. I am emphatic. I am, uh, I would say that to some extent, I will admit to be being strict for good cause, but um, not definitely unreasonable, uh, not definitely unreasonable, Your Honor. How about as an assistant dean? As, as an assistant dean, uh, Your Honor, um, it is my duty to, to keep everything in place. So from the organization to the loading of the professors, to the handling of the concerns of uh, the students, the enrollment, the implementation of the policies. And um, that makes me learn to be a person who is organized. I had to be systematic, but then again, I had to be strict in terms of uh, the impositions of the policies because we are required to do so, um, if only to, to comply with um, the lab's mandate and the standards that the school uh, needs to be met. Um, I am a bit strict with that, but definitely not inconsiderate. I, I am very considerate um, to our students also, Your Honor. All right. In one case decided by the Supreme Court in 2019, that is referring to anonymous complaint against Atonic Resencio Pico 
Hun Tian Jr. It is the administrative case number 5900, April 10, 2019. A lawyer professor was suspended for five years from the practice of law and 10 years from teaching law in a school for sexually harassing three of his students. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I have been part, although it does gladly so, it has never happened in the School of Law, as a legal counsel for the University of San Jose Recoletos, Your Honor. I have had handled um, a, a case similar to that still by a law professor, but was teaching in the in the undergraduate, uh, Your Honor, um, for, for sexual harassment acts of a student. So uh, I sat as a chair of the Committee on Discipline, uh, Your Honor, and my experience at the time really uh, made me realize that matters of sexual harassment and respect to the rights of women and students should not be taken lightly by educational uh, institutions, Your Honor, whether it's um, postgraduate or undergraduate degree, the level um, of, of standards and strictness and discipline that the, the institution should be imposed, Your Honor, um, should be the same. And professors, lawyers at that who commit acts of sexual uh, harassment to students or even to colleagues, Your Honor, render them unfit to practice the profession and would really warrant the necessary discipline, Your Honor, by the IBP through the Committee on Bar Discipline and then the Supreme Court, Your Honor. Because we should be examples, Your Honor, and then we are the first ones teaching or showing to our students the wrong thing, Your Honor. It's just not right. Aretha, how did the court pass upon the constitutionality of the field set? In a three minutes, uh, <laughs> well, Briefly stated. The, 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 the case in the field set, Your Honor, uh, actually encompassed not just the, the, the exam in itself, Your Honor, but uh, also the, the existence, mere existence of the Legal Education Board and the exercise of its powers as stated in Republic Act 7652. Um, the Supreme Court in, in, in that case um, rendered certain provisions of um, the Legal uh, Reform Act as unconstitutional as it, as it already encroached on the um, authority of the Supreme Court to regulate the admission and the practice of the profession. The case in itself clarified the role of the LEB, which is legal education, and the role of the Supreme Court on the admission and the practice of the law. Academic freedom was also uh, discussed uh, in the case, Your Honor, in relation to the administration of um, the Philippine law schools uh, up should uh, test, Your Honor, or feel sad in a sense that it should not be made mandatory. And the fact that feel sad all the while limited, one, the um, opportunity of the students to, to enter into law school and the right of the of the institutions to determine who to admit and, and the policies and the standards that they, they set made and rendered the sales that um, unconstitutional uh, on that note, Your Honor, because it did encroach on academic freedom. It also touched on um, the issue on the academic freedoms aspect on, on who to teach, um, who will teach rather, Your Honor, um, stating therein that Law schools or higher education institutions should have the right to choose and determine who should teach uh, law, Your Honor, rendering uh, the requirement of the holding of a master's degree by law professors, Your Honor, unconstitutional, Your Honor. All right, it's folly to deny that uh, legal education is an executive function as, as it is but a composite of the entire. Philippine education system. The court exercises only judicial functions and cannot and must not arrogate it upon itself. A power that is not constitutionally vested to it as a good result in the violation of the doctrine of separation of powers. That's been stated by the by the court. 
they think there is a mismatch between our legal education system and the practice of law? I think I think not. I think not, Your Honor, because um, the, while the Supreme Court has the authority to to regulate the admission and and the practice of law, still um, the Philippine edu Philippine legal education is a primary is still a component of Philippine education in itself, which is part of the executive functions um, functions of, um, of 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 the 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 executive department here on earth. While when we become lawyers already, lawyers while private individuals or even public um, uh, officials here on earth exercising their their functions are officers of the court or are extensions of the court over which the, the, the Supreme Court still has jurisdiction uh, over them. So I don't think there is a, a, a gap, um, a overlap on, on, on those two aspects here, Honor. All right, when asked by Justice Tiam whether it's legally or uh, constitutionally allowed to place the Legal Education Board under the supervision and control of the Supreme Court, you stated and your view was that uh, the uh, the court, the Supreme Court, cannot. Well, if you we were to 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 read the provisions of the Constitution, Your Honor, on the authority of the uh, Supreme Court, the definition of uh, legal education, there's a thin to me there's a thin line between um, legal education and admission to to the bar. Um, admission to the bar refers to the bar examination itself, but I don't think legal education falls under the definition of admission to the bar unless clarifications will be made by the Supreme Court uh, of these two definitions. But um, considering the status quo definition of this two year honor, I believe that the legal education um, should remain under uh, the executive uh, department, your honor, consistent with the fact that um, it is the state under the executive, who has the right to regulate um, Philippine education in general, over which legal education forms part of? It's legally impermissible. What can can it be cured by re legislation? Perhaps it can. Um, if, like I said, um, it would uh, the the functions of uh, the lab will have to be uh, amended, uh, amended, Your Honor. And um, even the composition of the board itself should also be changed to this time include a member, a sitting member um, of the Supreme Court, Your Honor, as part of uh, the Legal Education Board, because uh, right now it's only CHED and IBP. But the uh, Supreme Court is definitely a stakeholder when it comes to legal education, Your Honor. Because uh, when you were asked by Justice Tiham about your plans of the Legal Education Board, you uh, uh, emphasize and stress of the amendment of the said Legal Education Act, also with respect to the composition of the board. <clears throat> but uh, if there is a move in Congress for the abolition of the Legal Education Board and creating an office under the Supreme Court with similar functions, taking into consideration the functions which were declared unconstitutional by the court pursuant to Section 5, Subsection 5, Article 8 of the Constitution. Do you agree with this move? Uh I, 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 I pay your honor, and then in that note, that will definitely change the definition of admission to practice, um, admission to the bar, your honor, which will this time around already include uh, legal education, perhaps as in preparation to the admission and to the practice of law, your honor. And uh, what do you believe or do you think would be the various advantages? as why the Supreme Court is better off having control over legal education. Because there is, as, as, as what Justice a while ago mentioned, and he used the term umbilical cord, and I do agree, there is really a strong causal connection 
between the legal education, admission, and the practice of lawyer honor. You cannot take apart uh, these three, take one from, from the other. The moment you, a student studies law, the moment a higher institution or a law school operates, their goal really is for the students to become lawyers, um, to become lawyers in the future and to practice the profession of which the Supreme Court has interest, Your Honor. And in order to align um, the goals of the Supreme Court uh, on, on this note with regards to the practice of the profession, Your Honor, then I don't think it's really, and I, I think it's not a bad idea at all to this time connect and uh, annex um, the Legal Education Board to, to the Supreme Court, Your Honor, because um, if you look at it, we're, we're out, the CHED, there's a, there's a, there's a, we're supposed to be autonomous with, with a CHED uh, already, Your Honor, we're not even connected to the PRC because the Supreme Court is there. I think it will align um, everything and put in place where the legal education should be. So do you subscribe to the view that uh, the powers of the Legal Education Board under the Legal Education Reform Act are vague and refer mostly to periodic tasks. Just for example, the setting of accreditation standards and minimum standards for law admission. While some powers have already been done by the Supreme Court, just for example, MCLE and law practice internship under the rule, under rule 138 of the rules of court. And even the, the Justice Alex Gismundo in his uh, dissenting opinion, and I quote, the study of law is affected one way or another by the court's rulemaking power. What uh, are your thoughts on that? Yes, Your Honor, in a way, um, that, that, that is also one of the um, matters that I did mention uh, with regards to the amendment, one of which is to really set and clarify the role of uh, the Legal Education Board uh, in so far as legal education is concerned so that it will not encroach on the authorities of, uh, of the Supreme Court, uh, Your Honor. Because if you look at the, the functions as enunciated in Section 7 of uh, Republic Act 7662, there are um, authorities granted to the Legal Education Board that no longer involves legal education, but already touches on the practice of the profession, such like the continuing legal education, Your Honor. And that's not within the ambit of the lab, but that is already granted by the Constitution clearly to the uh, Supreme Court, Your Honor. So while not, there, yes, there are provisions um, uh, that needs to be clarified, Your Honor. And uh, did I hear you correctly? That's also for the, you can move for the reduction of the membership of the board. I most definitely will not move for the reduction, Your Honor, but the inclusion of uh, a member of the Supreme Court, Your Honor, in the board as a stakeholder, one of the stakeholders, Your Honor. All right, my time is up, uh, Chairman. Uh, can I ask for a one last question? Justice Remindosa? <laughs> All right. All right, my last question is uh, this, uh, Assistant Dean. Yes. What is neither inside a house nor outside a house, yet no house will be complete without it? What is neither inside a house? Inside a house nor outside the house, yet no house will be complete without it. A mother, Your Honor? Excuse me. I am I am I am confused, Your Honor. But I will just make a wild guess, Your Honor. Yes, a please. A mother. A mother. Why do you say it's a mother? Well, um, a a because they 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 say that a a mother is somebody who is all over, and they don't necessarily have to be uh inside the house to make an influence over you, but um. A, a, she is a person who, even while you are away, whether or not you are inside or outside of the home, uh, the influence of, of a mother um, will always step in and step in for you. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to ask that again to another applicant. <laughs> thank you very much for your time, Dean. 
and uh, good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor, Judge Ilaw. The last to interview Assistant Dean Batan is Honorable Justice Jose Patral Mendoza. Your Honor, Justice Mendoza, please. Okay, uh, uh, good morning, uh, Dean Batan. Uh, dean or Assistant Dean? Assistant Dean po, Your Assistant Honor. Good morning. Dean C. Recoleto, San Jose Recoleto. Okay. Uh, my colleagues have already asked you several questions on matters I wanted to cover. So I will just make these follow-up questions. Uh, you are applying as uh, as a chairman also and as a regular member. It is correct, Your Honor. Both, both from both positions. For for three for the three, Your Honor, active yes. law practitioner, IDP, and chairman, Your Honor. Yes, so oh. you are a team player. Do you consider yourself a team player? Yes, Your Honor. My experience with many organizations since college has taught me that, Your Honor. How do you regard the opinions of others with which you do not agree? Well, I always consider opinions of others to be um, as equally important as my own, Your Honor. And so um, if if in in my if I will be placed in a scenario wherein um, perhaps an undertaking that I would want to do or a decision that I would want to make um, is heavily uh, opposed or there are parallel opinions to it, then it would give me an opportunity to perhaps sit down and and reflect. I I do take that uh, route uh, oftentimes, Your Honor, to ponder uh, on things whether I am in the right or perhaps there is a need to. To revisit certain decisions that uh, I make, Your Honor, because perhaps I may be wrong. Good. Uh, uh, um, uh, it appears that uh, you have a red case of. Pimentel versus uh, the Legal Education Board, right? Uh, Previously, Your Honor, yes. I, I yes, oh, okay. I see. Uh, do you know the case uh, NMAT, the National Medicaid, um, uh, the NMAT, the Yes. I'm oh. to, to 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 read that, Your Honor. Um, previously, because I was, uh, I was curious uh, on how because I I, I really thought uh, at the time from the point of view of somebody in the academia, Your Honor, I was trying to because I always see law and med school, uh, medicine as as two parallel uh, postgraduate studies of equal importance, and um, I was I I did read uh try to to go through although not the entire case, Your Honor, I only read articles on how the decision was uh, made and how NMAT was justified as they val valid, Your Honor. So NMAT was allowed and uh, ruled as constitutional while Philsat was uh, not. Uh, so you know the reasons why or the difference between the two tests. Yes, Your Honor. First, the similarities. What are the similarities? Well, the similarities is that these are aptitude uh, examinations that are made as a prerequisite to be able to take up the two postgraduate uh, courses, Your Honor, uh, of which no student either who wishes to take medicine or who wishes to take up law uh, may be allowed to do so unless they take the uh, the field set. And um, um, law schools and med schools were required to admit only students who were able to take that um, examination, Your Honor. After which, the difference already, there lies the difference already. Well, the decision is not yet final. No? Uh, there are several motions for reconsideration. 
which up to now have not yet been resolved. Uh, do you agree with the decision implemented? Personal opinion on it. And which not yet final. Personal opinion, yes, Your Honor. I, I, you I agree. Do. I do agree uh, to some extent, Your Honor. I, I see the wisdom, honestly speaking. Um, I see the wisdom of the FILSAT as a means by which law schools can be guided on the quality of the students that they will be accepting. And, do you uh, agree with the court in striking it down? What, uh, what were the reasons given by well, the uh, court via the NMAT? I, I, I agree with the decision of the Supreme Court, Your Honor, because um, it completely restricted the law schools and it really impaired the right to to admit the right their academic freedom and the right to who to admit and and um, and 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 what kind of standards should should they be given? Because in in the field set, the lab at the time already imposed the passing grade and that those who don't who do not achieve that passing grade may not be admitted to to the law school and um the the, the clamor of of the educational institutions then was that discretion consistent with academic freedom should be given to to the law schools themselves and um if i am not mistaken your honor with regards to to the nmat the the uh, medical schools are given the wide uh, the latitude or the choice to set for themselves the grade um, for which the grade in the NMAT results um, for which the students can be able to be admitted, thereby giving um, the potential medical students the uh, opportunity to decide which laws, which medical schools they would want to go depending on on the stand the, the grades set by by the med school themselves which is not the case in Philsat because at the time it was all uniform. So you have no choice at all. Aside from academic freedom, what are the three, two other distinctions? According to Pumentel, there are, the, uh, the court gave three reasons why the, is the Philsat is different from NMAT. Aside from academic freedom what else well um aside from uh, academic uh freedom your honor uh, i think uh the supreme court uh also uh dwelled, dwelled on uh the autonomy or the right of um the, the students to choose where they would want to to to, to study uh, as well your honor and and that did not encompass on the uh, institution itself, but on the individual's choice of a of a law school, Your Honor, because with the FILSAT at the time, you don't have a choice at all anymore. The moment you don't reach that average uh, grade, then your chances um, of entering into any law school, for that matter, no longer um, exists, Your Honor, or is already uh, is already forfeited. And uh, the Supreme Court gave emphasis on. Um, um, that as well, uh, Your Honor, and um, on on the third, Your Honor, uh, yes. I, I I cannot I am cannot I, remember. I, I cannot recall what's the third one, Your Honor. Yes. According to the court, there were three reasons why uh, Philsat cannot be considered as the same as the handmap. Now, uh, in uh, the uh, FILSAT, uh, the, I mean to say, the Legal Education Board, uh, although the decision in Pimentel is not yet final, uh, is a bit uh, stymied by the academic freedom. Uh, it is no less... Uh, uh, Provided in this, in the our constitution, that uh, uh, the schools have academic freedom. Uh, what is, in your view, academic freedom? 
my 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 view of academic freedom, Your Honor, is giving yes. educational institutions because the, the Constitution has not defined it. It has been actually defined in the Supreme Court. By the Supreme, it, by by the the Constitution is there a constitutional provision? None, Your Honor. None. Your Honor. Oh. Okay. It is uh, the rulings of the Supreme Court that actually defined um, what academic freedom is. Yes. Oh. Uh, the oh. rulings of the Supreme Court uh, provided that academic freedom is giving the educational institutions uh, an extent of autonomy um, to determine what to teach, who to teach, how it should be taught, as well as the qualifications of um, those who can actually um, teach. Uh, however, my understanding also of academic freedom does not mean that um, it is that the state is totally um, not authorized or or limited in in imposing um, standards because the, the the definition as as stated in the Supreme Court is that the state still has the authority to provide the minimum standards. To be met so long as they do not control these uh, education institutions which to me when you talk about academic freedom the necessary element in determining whether there is encroachment to that freedom is the element still of control your honor in making such a statement the supreme court in several cases have quoted the uh, justice frankfurter of that who may teach what may be taught how it shall be taught and who to admit. Now, with respect to the fourth one, who to admit, uh, what can the uh, uh, Legal Education Board do uh, without, violating, uh, do, without violating uh, the on admission uh, to the school? Without violation, violating the academic freedom of the schools. Well, consistent with uh, Section Seven E of uh, Republic Act Seventy Six Sixty Two, wherein the Legal Education Board is given the authority to set the minimum standards um, for admissions or those that would should be met by these educational institutions. I think the lab can provide for the minimum standards that should be complied by this um, by the schools, by the law schools here on earth. And uh, upon um, imposition or, or of, the, of these minimum standards, discretion as to the policies that will be placed by these educational institutions with regards to the, quality, the, the standards for their admission, uh, retention, uh, your honor, so long as they comply with the minimum standards, should okay. be accorded to the schools. Should mean left uh, the control. minimum standards. Uh, minimum standards. The minimum. Uh, the minimum How do you determine that? What is acceptable and what is not acceptable? I, I, I think which brings me back to my point on the matter of or the element of control. Because if the standards that are already that are provided by the lab would, in a way, already limit or control um, the educational institutions of the right to admit and to retain um, the students. That's no longer minimum standards, I think, uh, Your Honor. I, I think the interest of the lab should only be uh, to ensure that law schools do not perform below par. Uh, as to what is required um, in the Philippine legal education and the requirements needed in the admission and in the practice of law. All mm -hmm. else, these standards, it should be the schools. Who what should do you mean below par? Who will determine, the Supreme Court or the lab? I, I, I what think do you mean below par? Par means is standard. Who sets the standard? How do you set the standard? Well, standards should be, the, the standard that should be implemented, I believe, Your Honor, should be one that is consistent with what is necessary, sufficient, with regards to the admission and the practice, uh, admission and the practice of law. 
Um, that's why I even said that the Supreme Court is indeed a stakeholder uh, in, in, in the legal education because they would be the ones who determine our whether or not the product of the legal education is fit to be admitted and even fit to, to, to practice law. So the standards that should be set by, by the lab should be one that is necessarily um, connected to or related to the standards set by the Supreme Court for its admission to the bar. So it could not well, be... Well, one of those uh, measures they adopted was the field set. And was, it was struck down, although the decision is not yet final. Mm -hmm. So what can you do uh, if this is not the standard, this is uh, beyond the legal standard, constitutional standard? What can you do? Your Honor, I think that the, the fail set um, per se um, was not struck down because uh, it did not meet the, the, the standard. Um, it was struck down because it in, encroached on the academic freedom. Yes, and, that's correct. That's correct. There were three reasons given by uh, Supreme it, Court. Why it's different from NMAC? Foremost is the violation of the academic freedom. Yeah. Now, uh, the Legal Education Board was created under the Republic Act 7662. Uh, since its creation, have you followed uh, what it has done, the Legal Education Board? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, what, were, what have been its accomplishments? Um, foremost, uh, Your Honor, uh, especially when um, the Legal Education Board began to, to, to sit down under the turf of the late Justice Hilarion Aquino, there was a manual of regulation for legal education, which is the version similar to uh, the MORFE for, or implemented by the Commission on Higher Education, which indeed guided the law schools, Your Honor, in um, running the law schools admission and, and, and the qualifications even of both the students and, and, and the teachers, Your Honor, as well as the, the curriculum. Moving forward, um, changes were, were in fact made with regards to the conferment of the degrees and the migration of Bachelor of Laws to uh, Juris Doctor, um, making um, our degrees at least at par at par internationally um, with with other with other nations. And um, uh, although I have not been updated, but efforts in fact were even exerted in preparation supposedly for ASEAN integration. Then, Your Honor, um, supposedly to prepare our lawyers and uh, law students for cross-border, um, supposedly cross-border uh, practices, uh, Your Honor. And constantly, um, revisions and proposed curriculums have been made to guide uh, the law schools and uh, accreditation of, and the grant of permits of law schools have also been made by, uh, by the lab, Your Honor. Now, uh, those you consider as accomplishments of the left. Now, you are aspiring uh, to be not only chairman, but a member of the left. What uh, do you intend to do or propose to improve legal education without uh, transgressing the academic freedom of the schools? Um. One of the things, Your Honor, which uh, I join with the Philippine Association of Law Schools is uh, the streamlining, <clears throat> sorry, Your Honor, of the curriculum uh, of, of the legal uh, education, Your Honor, either eliminating or integrating other essential uh, law subjects for study, Your Honor, which can only be done uh, in partnership with the Supreme Court so that the curriculum will also be consistent with the subjects to be taken um, by a barrister when he or she takes the, the bar examination, Your Honor. Um, that's one of the things that uh, I would want to, to look into as a chairperson or as member if the, of the Legal Education Board, uh, if, if given uh, the opportunity. Another uh, also, Your Honor, is to probably explore other fields of legal education that does not necessarily involve um, Juris Doctor. Um, but also allied uh, courses that may fall under the legal education, which would also provide opportunities 
for those who are not fortunate to pass the bar examination but may still be considered and may be allowed to um, practice um, their knowledge uh, of the law, Your Honor, not necessarily uh, uh, as a lawyer. Efforts have been made also, Your Honor. Uh, you are referring to the position of a paralegal? Do you know what is a paralegal? Uh, a paralegal, Your Honor, is a person short of being a lawyer who also applies basic knowledge uh, uh, of, of the law, um, Your Honor. But not, he's not a member of the bar, right? Not a member of the bar. Do you favor the creation of such position, paralegal? I, I believe I believe so, Your Honor, because there are really persons at present who uh, perform the functions of, of the paralegal, and I think it's important to to to, to they be recognized. Yes, to recognize and professionalize uh, them, Your Honor, because paralegals, uh, most of these paralegals really have finished the, the degree, Your Honor, and only fall short of the title attorney, Your Honor. Yes, we have that uh, in many of our state agencies, like the DAL. Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Uh, I think that will be all, uh, Dean. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Your Honor, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor, Justice Mendoza. That ends the public panel interview of Assistant Dean May Elaine T. Batan. Thank you, and we bid you good luck, uh, Attorney Batan. Thank you, Attorney Anne. God bless. God bless you, folks. Thank you, Senator. Attorney Leia, the next candidate, please. Yes, ma'am, admitting for. Your Honors, to be interviewed next is Dean Pauline Grace T. Buñol Alfuente. She is uh, vying for the position of Legal Education Board Chairperson and Legal Education Board regular member representing the IBP and the ranks of active law practitioners. She was actually the first to be interviewed during the 13-day series of public interviews of candidates for the appellate courts held last uh, uh, held from November 23 to January 18, 2021. Good morning, uh, Dean Alfuente. Good morning. Questions is Honorable Judge Franklin J. De Monteverde. Your Honor, Judge De Monteverde. Okay, thank you, Attorney Ann. Welcome, Your Honor. Good, uh, good morning. morning. Good morning, Dean uh, Buñol Alfuente. Good morning, Your Honor. Yeah, I interviewed you last November. November 23, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Your Honor. 23 of 2020. Yes, Your Honor, yes. Okay, that being said, I only have a few questions to propound, no? Okay. How long have you been uh, the Dean of the University of Iloilo? I've been the Dean of the University of Iloilo for 11 years, Your Honor. 11 years? So when, when were you specifically appointed as such? Uh, I was appointed last uh, April 1 of 2009, and uh, uh, they phased out the law school. That is the second law school that FINMA phased out. The first was around the University of Iloilo. So I was, uh, uh, I was at uh, the University of Iloilo until June 15, 2020. Okay. How long have you been in actual practice? Since the time I passed the bar, Your Honor, um, in 2004. And what about teaching law? How long have you been teaching law? I have been teaching Exclude, law. Uh, uh, by the way, as dean, did you also teach law? Yes, Your Honor. I, all, the, I taught, all the while yeah. that you were the dean, you were also yes, teaching some subjects in the law school. 
Yes, a uh, minimum of six units, Your Honor, but that, that is required by the management that we will uh, at least six units. At least six units, okay. Now, uh, Section 4 of Republic Act 7662 provides that the chairman must preferably be a former justice of the Supreme Court or Court of Appeals. What could be the reason behind this provision? If you know. Uh, yes, Your Honor, because uh, this will be able to help the uh, Legal Education Board regarding uh, really the the uh, legal uh, the practice of legal profession, Your Honor. So it will be um, um, it will be considered an advantage if uh, the one who will be the chairperson um, is uh, or was a uh, member of the judiciary, especially the uh, Court of Appeals, Your Honor. And all, uh, there's one reason only in order to help that you cited. And, and uh, to provide uh, also advice and uh, um, give uh, additional uh, know how and knowledge in order to uh, make the policies of uh, the law school to be more effective, Your Honor. Would you agree with me that the good reason behind this preference? is that the position demands such moral ascendancy, moral authority, and full respect in the appointee by all legal education stakeholders. Yes, Would you sir, agree sir. with me on that? Yes, Your uh -huh. Honor, I agree with that, Your Honor. Okay. Why should this be so, if you agree with me? Because of the uh, moral ascendancy and the experience of uh, the said uh, chairperson your honor is coming from uh, the court of appeals uh, one can give uh, uh, be, be, uh, first is respect second also is the experience during the time that uh, that person was in the judiciary uh, your honor and to train also uh, the uh, prospective uh, uh, to, to, to train and prepare also um, the law schools as well as the faculty of law and the law students, Your Honor, because of experience also. Okay. You are not a retired justice of the Supreme Court, either of the Court of Appeals. But do you have the moral ascendancy, the moral authority, and the respect earned by the stakeholders? I have been the dean. Uh, you you have time. been the dean for twelve years. You said yes. No? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. I've uh, I've been the dean of a private uh, uh, institution, private law school, and now I'm in the I'm the dean of a state university, which is West Visaya State University, Your Honor. And uh, I've been uh, in my experience uh, with uh, the legal uh, education. I have been uh, the officer. Uh, of the Philippine Association of Law Schools during the time that I was the dean. I was the treasurer for uh, four years. I have been the auditor and I have been uh, also uh, a board of trustee. So I have uh, learned um, what will be the need of uh, the law schools and I have attended seminars also wherein legal education board has, uh, has made and uh, has planned for the law deans, uh, your honor, as well as the faculty of law. You were a member of the board of trustees of what what uh, firm, what uh, agency? A Philippine Association of Law Schools, your honor, when I was the dean at the University of Iloilo. And you are... Uh, and I've been appointed attend, as... Uh, the, uh, you were appointed what? I, I was also appointed as uh, auditor, and I was also elected... Uh, appointed as a uh, uh, treasurer for four years. So I know, uh, Your Honor, the needs of uh, the organization, of the legal education. Isn't it a fact that uh, one 
in order to prevent any dissension in the board, one must have moral ascendancy over them. Yes, Your Honor. That's and do you do you have it? You will. You are aspiring for the position of chairperson. Uh, yes, actually, yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, I applied for the position of a chairperson, member of the IBP, and uh, actually the three, Your Honor. Um, and and what is the one? What is the other one? Uh, association of uh, 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 practitioners. Ah, Honor. okay, okay. Um, my colleagues, Your Honor, the law deans of uh, of uh, the Philippines already know me, Your Honor, and. Um, I think I have uh, also moral ascendancy because uh, I've earned their respect for more than a decade. So I think I am qualified to have uh, this position, uh, even as a chairperson, Your Honor. And you can you weld the board into one united yes. front? Yes, Your Honor. I can do that, Your Honor. You have the necessary experience for that? Yes, Your Honor. I have a good administrative skills, Your Honor, because I'm also a practicing CPA at the same time, a practicing lawyer, Your Honor. No, uh, being a practicing CPA and a practicing lawyer does not mean that you can have the you can have the the moral ascendancy over your other uh, members of the board. Uh, they couldn't see. Uh, Mm, based on the other members, Your Honor, they would uh, already, um, even though I have not been elected as an officer, they would uh, uh, include me as part of the committee, Your Honor, uh, okay. for the Philippine Association of Law Schools. Okay. Attorney Buñol Alfuente, what is your philosophy of legal education? The philosophy of legal education is to prepare um, the law students in order mm -hmm. for them to um, be lawyers and even if they will not pass the bar, they would be good uh, paralegals and uh, if they will be employed in the government and private sector, they would know how to deal with uh, many uh, problem-solving uh, cases, decision-making, advocacy, and uh, counseling, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Now, between the Socratic method or case method of teaching, which methodology of teaching law will you espouse? And um, why? For, uh, for us, Your Honor, for, for the province, we use the Socratic method, Your Honor. But, however, now we are dealing with online because uh, of uh, the, the restrictions during this pandemic, Your Honor. And we haven't uh, been in uh, a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting with them, but uh, <laughs> but we are trying, Your Honor, to do our uh, uh, to do our uh, duties well uh, as faculty of law, Your Honor, to hone these students to be uh, um, members of the legal profession and to be competent, uh, even though they have not passed the bar in their own fields of uh, endeavor, Your Honor. So which of the two methodology would you espouse? The Socratic method, Your Honor. Love the coaching. Socratic method? Yeah. Because of the online, the virtual, uh, virtual uh, application of things during the pandemic time. Yes, Your Honor. And it's synchronous. Uh, for us, Your Honor, it's synchronous learning, not more of a synchronous Okay. How about the outcome-based education? Would you encourage this as a policy of legal education? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Actually, the outcome base is already with the, um, the CHED, uh, the Commission okay. on Higher Education, including the graduate school. And it can also be used, Your Honor, for the Legal Education Board. And what is the policy of the CHED? In so far as this OBE is concerned, uh, there are trainings uh, for the time being. There are trainings done by uh, CHED uh, for uh, this uh, um, undergraduate schools as well as the graduate uh, school, Your Honor. Um, and uh, they can use this. Uh, sometimes they use the modular um, for the OBE, Your Honor, modular method of instruction. 
other. On the other hand, what do you understand by an academic freedom and what are its parameters? Uh, academic freedom um, uh, can be, uh, uh, it applies to the law school or to the academic institutions as well as the, facu the professors or the, the faculty members. So uh, they have the right to, uh, um, the, the school has the right to uh, hire uh, who to, uh, as the person who will teach what uh, will be taught, how it will be taught, and uh, the students to be admitted, uh, Your Honor. And for the faculty, um, they have the right to teach and to teach what they believe is true and uh, to defend it, and they have the right to publish research and uh, other, uh, um, and other uh, writings that they believe is true without being maligned or molested, Your Honor, in, in any other manner. Republic Act 7662 is known as the Legal Education Reform Act of 1993. Now, should you ever be appointed as a chairperson, what amendments or reforms would you propose? Um, first, Your Honor, is there is a conflict uh, with the jurisdiction of the court regarding the uh, uh, practice of law and regarding the clinical uh, um, legal education and apprenticeship that should be amended your honor and uh, in what way shall it be amended um it will delete those uh, um clauses regarding the uh, um continuing legal education and the uh, legal clinic, and uh, it uh, will also uh, um, uh, delete the preparation of. Uh, uh, it will also uh, delete the preparation of uh, the law students for the practice of law. That is only for um, education purposes, Your Honor. Also, I would like to uh, include. Uh, for the revision, the budget for the Legal Education Board. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, the Legal Education Board is under uh, the budget of the um, CHED, Your Honor. Um, and uh, it does not uh, state a specific amount. There is no seed money. Um, unlike the CHED, that uh, during the time of uh, the inception of the CHED, there was a seed money amounting to 500000 Your Honor, that will be used for the policy making of the said agency. And uh, also, Your Honor, um, also, I'm not, uh, I, I also would like to have this uh, law school admission test, but it should be uh, not uh, to constrain the uh, academic freedom of uh, the other law school, Your Honor, because uh, their existence will be in jeopardy. And of course, since uh, but most important that need to be revised uh, for the legal, uh, for the lab is uh, the secretariat or the admin, Your Honor, because they don't have uh, sufficient people um, uh, to be, to administer the said uh, agency of uh, the government. And like CHED and even TESDA, Your Honor, they have this, the secretariat to do the administrative things um, in order to uh, operate the said agency. Okay, why would you propose to delete the provision on continuing legal education under the powers of the board, of the, yes, of the board? Uh, that would be uh, already a conflict with the uh, constitutional uh, power of the Supreme Court, that it is the Supreme Court that has the jurisdiction over um, continuing legal education and not the legal education board, Your Honor. Okay. Now, would you consider, or what do you think is the effect of this uh, education board, legal education board, to be under the CHED? Has it been effective under the setup? Uh, in my opinion, Your Honor, it is not. 
it uh, explain you yeah, explain yes your honor um in order first is regarding the budget they have to go to shed in order for them to have the allocation for their subsidy and mm -hmm. uh, second your honor uh, the Ched people, uh, not all of them are lawyers and they do not know the legal education, Your Honor. So it is uh, difficult for the legal education to move uh, forward in order uh, to uh, um, exercise uh, the mandate uh, of uh, their mandate and policies in order for it to be a better agency for legal education, Your Honor. Okay. Attorney Buñol uh, Alfuente, how are you as a person? What is your personality? I am a very strong person, Your Honor, and I am very honest. Okay. I uh, don't want uh, uh, fake people. And uh, for me, um, uh, what uh, what will you? Anything that you will do will event will really go back to you, whether positive or negative your honor but uh, you are emotionally unstable uh, no your honor. meaning meaning that you can compose or you can control your emotions yes your honor yes your honor i can uh, compose my emotions how about in cases where you are pressured or the work that you have at hand is uh, filled with the tension uh, that you uh, have to meet some deadlines how would you uh, react to it uh, i would uh, i would take a deep breath your honor i would uh, sometimes i would uh, have time uh, for myself alone and uh, make a list of uh, these things that i need to prioritize and uh, i will talk to my uh, staff uh, at my law office and my accounting office as well as my staff uh, at the law school and even talk to other uh, um, colleagues in the profession, Your Honor, uh, so I can uh, deal with uh, this stress, Your Honor. So when confronted by problems, do frustrations and pain affect you? Yes, Your Honor, of course, uh, it uh, really affects uh, me. Uh, but I learn how to handle it as soon as possible, Your Honor. Um, I know that problems will, will really come, but uh, this uh, can also uh, go, Your Honor, if you have the right attitude on how to deal with this problem, Your Honor. Okay, you have a problem, and sometimes frustrations and pain are reflected. And somehow, this leads to anxiety and depression. Do you have, or rather, have you experienced this kind of situation, your emotional setup? Uh, I have experienced a lot of problems, your Honor, but pertaining to anxiety or depression, I haven't uh, experienced that, Your Honor. Okay. But you are a sensitive person, uh, Attorney Buñol Alfuente. Sensitive um, person. Uh, it, it depends, Your Honor, upon the situation. If, okay. Uh, okay. There is a criticism, and the criticism is destructive. How would you react to it? Uh, I will uh, I will take it uh, I will take the constructive criticism and I will assess myself constructive I, criticism how about yes, destructive one I will uh, I will also uh, look into it and uh, check uh, whether really um, I have a, a problem or is it really me who has a problem your honor and correct it I will correct mm -hmm. it. You correct it. Have you experienced uh, going to the extreme of uh, being aggressive when uh, criticisms are destructive? 
Mm, so far, none, Your Honor. I not a, a, not a single yet. instance. Okay. Mm, none, Your Honor, yes. Okay. How good is a leader are you? I am a good leader, Your Honor. In what in what way, Attorney Buñol Alfuente? Um, leadership by example, and I uh, uh, mentor um, my uh, my staff and uh, those who are my subordinates, Your Honor. I mentor them, and I'm fair. Okay. Now, when let's say uh, you, you espouse leadership by example. What if your uh, members do not agree with you on a certain issue? How would you react to that? I will listen to their uh, side, Your Honor, and uh, we will uh, have to uh, talk about it and we will have to adopt what is the best principle, Your Honor, even though I am wrong and I think that what they have uh, uh, inform me is uh, better than what I'm thinking, I can adopt it, Your Honor. When one disagrees with you and further and moreover hurls destructive criticisms on your actions, you get depressed sometimes. Am I correct? Uh, there are times, Your Honor, okay. yes. And when depressed, what do you do? Or what did you do? Uh, usually, I will think it over, and uh, I am. Uh, I would like to uh, talk to that person if uh, mm -hmm. I'm already. Uh, um, I'm already. Uh, what you call this? I've already integrated it. Uh, that I'm not. Uh, I'm not angry anymore. So uh, I'm a confrontational person, Your Honor. So uh, it, uh, I don't have uh, the difficulty in talking to the correct person, Your Honor. Always. Okay, but this uh, this uh, depressive tendency of yours has somewhat uh, affected your decision making. Am I correct? Mm, some there are times, Your Honor, but not most of the time. Okay, there sometimes are. only. Yeah. Okay. Okay, my last question, uh, Attorney Buñol, uh, Al Fuente, Pauline, no, Pauline. Yes, Your okay. Honor. Okay. Convince me to include you in my shortest. I'm an honest person. I'm a fair person. Um, I walk my talk. Okay. And, uh, yes, Your Honor. That's all. Sige, sige. Walk your talk. I, I, I <laughs> do not understand that. What is that walk the talk? If I'm talking about something, I usually do it, Your Honor. So uh, um, I am really a, uh, a strong person and... Uh, I think I can talk to anybody without uh, restricting what I feel, Your Honor. So walk the talk, does that mean that you become aggressive? It depends, Your Honor. You Your Honor. <laughs> How about becoming violent? Uh, no, Your Honor. <laughs> no? Yes. Violent Other against things? your uh, critics? Uh, it is... Just normal that I will be angry, but uh, I will have other um, means in order for me to, uh, um, not, to be not angry anymore. So, but were there right. times that you blame yourself for such fiasco? No, Your Honor, I haven't. Not in an, not one instance. Uh, so far, Your Honor, none. None. Okay, Pauline, Attorney Pauline, that was my last question. Good luck and uh, good luck and uh, stay safe. Thank you, Your Honor. Likewise. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor, Judge Dimitri okay. Verde. Thank you, Attorney Anne. The turn of uh, Honorable Justice Noel Jimenez Tiham to interview Dean of Fuente. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Anne. Uh, good morning, Attorney Pauline. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, I have interviewed you in the past when you applied for the Court of Tax Appeals. Is yes, Your it? Honor. Last November 23, 2020. What, what again is your understanding of 
academic freedom in 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 layman's term what is your understanding you were asked that question by Jeds uh, de Monteverde yes your honor um the school um has the, the academic freedom um to uh, uh to, to do give uh, um, what to teach, how to do it, uh, who to hire, and uh, who to admit. And for the faculty, the faculty has the right to teach what he believes is true um, in order to um, have his uh, teaching, uh, in order to educate uh, the students based on what uh, he believes is true without any uh, um, molestation when he will publish his research, Your Honor, and other uh, publications for that matter. Is it, is it constitutional for the Supreme Court to dictate that the bar examinations should be conducted online? Is it constitutional? Yeah, yes, Your Honor, it's constitutional. What is the constitutional basis? Um, regarding your honor, uh, the Supreme Court, based on the Constitution, has the power to promulgate the rules regarding the uh, practice of uh, lawyer honor and admission to the practice of law. Is it, constitutional, is it constitutional for the Supreme Court to dictate that all online classes i'm sorry that all classes among low students be conducted online is it constitutional yes your honor it is constitutional because of uh, the situation now your honor because of the pandemic and it's been observed your honor by uh, the law schools and it's up also your honor to the uh, academic institution if they will uh, also uh, your Honor, do that, Your Honor. You're, you're answering, you're giving the correct answer to the wrong question. You said it's constitutional. So what happened to academic freedom? If the Supreme Court can dictate upon low schools that classes among low students, you're talking of classes among low students should be done online. Is it constitutional? Um, I mean... Uh, uh, mistake, Your Honor. So you can, I have. To, you can, yeah. you can uh, change your answer. Yes. Um, your <laughs> Honor, um, uh, regarding uh, legal education, Your Honor, it is an executive function, not the judiciary function. So I think it's uh, not constitutional for the Supreme Court to um, have classes uh, online, Your Honor. So it's and up make to it, the, And make it mandatory for all schools. Yes, the Supreme Honor. Court cannot do that. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, uh, in the recent news, there was this uh, disagreement brought about by the revocation by Secretary Lorenzana of the Soto and Rile agreement with respect to the University of the Philippines and also which was superseded by the Abueva Secretary Ramos agreement with respect to the University of the Philippines. Is the revocation by Secretary Lorenzana of those agreements constitutional in your opinion? For me, Your Honor, it is not uh, constitutional. This has been uh, for more than three decades already and for past uh, the past presidents, Your Honor. So, uh, so agreement? Are you saying agreements cannot be revoked? <laughs> the Constitution prohibits the cancellation of agreements? I will change my answer, Your Honor. Uh, it is constitutional, Your Honor, for the revocation of the agreement because it has... I think it has already expired, uh, so uh, it uh, it uh, is uh, um, what you call this. It is constitutional. Sorry. You you think it expired? Uh, tell me, 
uh, what is your understanding of those agreements with respect to the University of the Philippines? Uh, that, uh, Did you those agreements? <laughs> or you just <laughs> assume that they expired? I, I, I think, so, sorry, Your Honor, it was revocated. It was revoked. It did not expire, Your Honor. What were, what were those agreements, by the way? If you uh, recall. It, it, With respect about, to the University of the Philippines. The Department of National Defense, Your Honor, that they cannot, uh, the AFP cannot enter the premises of uh, the University of uh, the Philippines. Um, and uh, they cannot, uh, it needs to be, before they, before the entrance, Your Honor, they need to coordinate with uh, the school, with the University of the Philippines, Your Honor. So I have- So if uh, there is a fire, means, uh, if there is a fire inside the building, <clears throat> before the fire trucks can enter, do you need the consent? You, do you have to notify first the president of the University of the Philippines? <clears throat> before the police, for example, sends the fire trucks no. or the ILD sends the fire trucks to the University of the Philippines? No <laughs> need, okay. Your Honor. Only, I only know, uh, Your Honor, of the AFP, the Armed Forces, Your Honor, not the other. It includes also the police, okay. Under the agreement, it says that before you, you can serve the search warrant, you can serve an arrest warrant, you have to notify in advance the UP school authorities before you implement it. Is that constitutional, in your opinion, as a lawyer and as an educator? It depends, Your Honor, on the situation, I think. If, uh, it, uh, if it's regarding the freedom of speech of uh, the students, because... Uh, most of the students uh, no, are not, really... We're not talking of freedom of speech. My question is implementation of a search warrant and implementation of a warrant of arrest. Do you agree that the Constitution prohibits the service of a search warrant and a warrant of arrest without prior notice? to the school authorities in the University of the Philippines? Is there, that there should, there should be a prior notice, Your Honor, because uh, they would go to the appropriate uh, um, office in order to serve that uh, warrant, Your Honor. As a practicing lawyer, is it customary, is it normal that if you have a search warrant, duly issued by a court, you have to notify the owner of the house or of the building that you're going to that house or building to execute a search warrant. Is it customary, uh, normal? Uh, they have to go there, Your Honor, uh, if they already have the search warrant. But for the school, it needs to be... Uh, uh, they need to go to the admin uh, office, Your Honor, in order uh, for it to be served, Your Honor, to the student who is inside, Your Honor, the, the school. So it's an exception. The, the University of the Philippines is a special case that should be given special consideration. That is what you're saying under the Constitution. Mm, no, no, Your Honor. Uh, even other schools, not necessarily a University of the Philippines, Your Honor. Because I have experienced is that, that, that once. Consistent? Is that consistent with the Equal Protection Clause in the Constitution? So if you are a fugitive, for example, or you violated the law and an information is filed in court, you cannot execute a warrant of arrest if somebody is inside the University of the Philippines without prior notification, whereas in other places outside of the University of the Philippines, you follow the customary normal procedure. Is that what you're saying? Academic freedom gives them that special consideration? 
Yes, Your Honor. That gives them uh, the special consideration, not only for uh, the SUC, but for uh, the state university also, Your Honor, for other um, educational institutions. So that is a, a, a free zone that cannot be entered into by a police or by the military, just like a foreign embassy. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Attorney Pauline, if University A adopts a numerical method of grading. If your grade in low school is below 75, you fail. If it is 75 and above, you pass. And University B adopts a different method of grading, simply a pass or fail grading system so there is a disparity is that allowed should that be allowed by the legal education board yes your honor it and what is the allowed. basis for that um uh, if that will be the case your honor there is a uh, uh what you call um a uh, it can be transferred or it has another um aspect of corresponding to that ABC, Your Honor, pertaining to the uh, other uh, grading system that has numerical value. There should be, a, um, what you call this, a, uh, an, um, a uh, conversion, Your Honor. It can be converted because uh, in uh, other uh, schools, they have this uh, ABC or pass or fail, and for the other schools, they have this numerical value, Your Honor. So there is a conversion for that. Supposing a law is passed by Congress requiring low schools to admit only those students who graduated from pre-law education with a general weighted average of 80%, 80, 80. Is that law constitutional? So there is a limitation, Your Honor, and that would entail um, a violation of academic freedom as to who will be admitted by the school or by the law school, Your Honor. So that is uh, unconstitutional, Your Honor. So can a low school adopt a system that they will admit low students even if their weighted average from pre-law is 60%? Can they do that in the exercise of academic freedom? Regarding the general weighted average, the, the law schools have admission requirements, Your Honor. So... Uh, um, if their admission requirements uh, just place their the 60%, then they can do that. However, if their admission requirement has a greater um, general weighted average, then that will be observed, Your Honor, by the law school. So you're, say, you're saying the law school in the exercise of academic freedom can lower the admission grade to 50%. And that would be legal because it is unconstitutional because it is in the exercise of academic freedom. That's what you're saying. Yes, Your Honor, they can, can do that. However, aside from the admission and the legal education board would be entirely powerless to interfere in that legal education. For the admission requirements, Your Honor. However, law schools also have the retention policy. 
so they can uh, these students even though they have been admitted even though their general weighted average is not that really high and they failed uh, they did not get the retention policy or they will be kicked out of the law school also your honor that is only for the admission for that said uh, uh, 50 percent what is the legal basis of the generally accepted passing grade of 75 is that is there empirical basis is there scientific basis for the grade of 75 for for uh, the undergrad i think there is uh, that particular grading system your honor but during my time when i was the dean at the college of law our passing percentage for the first year and second year is only 60 and for the third year, it's 70. And for the fourth year, it's 75, Your Honor. So it's up, Your Honor, to the um, academic uh, institution, Your Honor, to do that. So uh, it depends, Your Honor. Because uh, law school is really different, Your Honor, from undergraduate uh, school. Just because I have been teaching also in the undergrad. And law school is really far, far different from the undergrad. In your opinion... If the Supreme Court adopts a bar grading system of simply pass or fail, in your opinion, will that be constitutional and consistent with upgrading the standard of legal education? It's constitutional, Your Honor, if it's only passed or failed. But of course, the results will be given to this uh, uh, bar examination, Your Honor. So what do you consider legal education substandard? When you say substandard, it presupposes that there is a standard, correct? So in your opinion, as somebody aspiring for the Legal Education Board, when is the legal education substandard? Legal education is substandard if it did not uh, do to uplift um, the legal uh, education system, Your Honor. Um, uh, if uh, there was no, no capacity building, is being uh, observed in order to help uh, the law schools to have uh, or to maintain a quality, Your Honor. It means to say that uh, the law schools uh, should uh, have a uh, higher passing percentage uh, of uh, law students to pass the bar, Your Honor. So there should be capacity building on the part of uh, legal education. Your Honor. Do you believe that the standard of legal education in low schools all over the Philippines should be consistent and uniform? Uh, yes, Your Honor, it should be. It, it should be the same uh, for the policies of the CHED, Your Honor, also. So it would is have... It not, uh, is it not militate against the principle of academic freedom? Because you said that it is tolerable for some schools to adopt a lower numerical grade, weighted grade, compared to other schools who may adopt a higher weighted grade. Is that, is that in sync with what you're saying that the standard of legal education in all schools should be uniform and consistent? Uh, that is but only if, your honor. If, if uh, low school A adopts a passing grade of 60, low school B adopts a passing grade of 70, and low school C adopts a passing grade of 80, in the exercise of academic freedom, is the standard of legal education in that scenario considered consistent and uniform? Um, that would be for the admission requirements only, Your Honor. That I'm not talking of the admission. I'm talking now of 
completing the legal education, graduating from law schools. Because you said schools may adopt different grading systems in the exercise of academic freedom. Yes, Your Honor, they can. So, yes. Do you agree with the proposition that substandard legal education translates into poor performance in the bar examinations? Yes, Your Honor, it can be. It uh, can be considered, Your Honor. That, but uh, you are a proponent of just letting all law schools adapt their own method of grading, even if they vary, even if they are inconsistent, even if they are not uniform. Is that what you're saying? But there is also a conversion, Your Honor. So. Uh, it would depend on the score or the grade of uh, the students, Your Honor. You have read the case of Pimentel versus Legal Education Board. The Legal Education Board Memorandum Order Number 1-2011 was found to be un unconstitutional. concerning the practice of law and legal assistance of the underprivileged. Why, why do you think it was declared unconstitutional? Uh, that is not the jurisdiction anymore of uh, the Legal Education Board because it's uh, already with the uh, Supreme Court, Your Honor, regarding uh, the, the practice of law. Are you saying that when the Legal Education Board promulgated that memorandum order, it was encroaching? into the powers of the Supreme Court, the rulemaking power? Were they usurping the powers of the Supreme Court if they stated that merely to restate a policy of the Supreme Court? Is that sufficient basis to declare it unconstitutional? The uh, function of uh, the Legal Education Board is more on the executive which is only for the preparation of uh, the law students, Your Honor, and it is not pertaining to the practice of law, Your Honor. So that would be already uh, um, a conflict, Your Honor. And the Legal Education Board also issued an issuance on the need of legal apprenticeship and law practice as a requirement for taking the bar. Is that unconstitutional? Uh, for the Legal Education Board, it's uh, also uh, unconstitutional, Your Honor. Why? For the legal Why is it unconstitutional? Because regarding the admission to the bar, it's uh, provided under Rule 138 of the Rules of Court, Your Honor, and it has already been amended, Your Honor. So it's already the... Uh, Supreme Court that has that uh, jurisdiction, Your Honor, not the Legal Education Board. But uh, these uh, two agencies, the Judiciary and the Legal Education Board, can work hand in hand, Your Honor, uh, to have that, uh, to promulgate and to have that Rule 138 in order for the students already to take the bar in 2023. You give a, a correct answer to another question, which I did not ask. But the Supreme Court approved legal apprenticeship and internship. They approved that. So if it is a, a rule adopted by the Supreme Court, if the Legal Education Board merely mimics or reiterates an existing policy or rule of the Supreme Court, is that an encroachment that justifies a declaration of unconstitutionality? Uh, regarding apprenticeship, uh, Your Honor, it is provided for under the LEBMO that once uh, the law school has already uh, uh, organized the legal clinic, it would be um, forwarded to the Supreme Court, Your Honor, for approval. Yes, Your Honor, they, they just uh, 
mimic what the Supreme Court has. So, so it's... Uh, is it's, that sufficient uh, to declare it unconstitutional? Just because the Legal Education Board said it also? It can be that the Legal Education Board uh, also adapted that, Your Honor. But in that particular... Uh, I've uh, read that in that particular um, legal clinic, uh, they would forward, the lab would forward it to the Supreme Court, Your Honor. So it's not unconstitutional. Do you agree that this decision in one way emasculated and diminished the powers of the Legal Education Board? That the Legal Education Board has the power and authority up to the time the law student completes the legal education and graduates. But after that, the Legal Education Board is powerless because they have nothing to do with applying for the bar examinations, correct? Mm, not really, Your Honor, because even though this uh, student is, uh, uh, will not pass the bar, um, they no, have, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm talking of the powers of the Legal Education Board, the authority. Is it coterminous to what stage? It starts from where and it ends at where? That is my question. Legal, the Legal Education Board is mandated to attend to legal education, correct? Meaning yes, to say, I'm a law student enrolls in law school up to the time that the law student graduates from law school, correct? Yes, Your Honor. After that, the Legal Education Board has nothing to do. That's what the, what's, that's what the decision is saying. The Legal Education Board has nothing to do because when it relates to applying or admission to the Philippine Bar, that is under the rulemaking power of the Supreme Court. Now, in the meantime, during the transit of legal education of a law student from enrollment up to graduation, the Legal Education Board is not even powerful enough because we, they have to contend with academic freedom. Correct? So what is the Legal Education Board there <laughs> when the law that created it most provisions were struck down as unconstitutional. I think the law, Your Honor, should be amended or should be revised, Your Honor. So there should be, I think there is already a bill for the amendment of uh, uh, the Legal Education Board law. So what kind of amendments are you thinking of? Um, first, Your Honor, regarding the um, funding. So there should be an allocation of uh, some amount or a seed money in order for the legal education to have uh, uh, plans, uh, Your Honor, and priorities. Yes, yes. And, uh, I agree. It's good to have funding. It's also good to have plans and policies. But if your the ambit of your power and authority is delimited, the Legal Education Board cannot act after graduation of low students from low schools. Can they? Can the Legal Education Board still do anything after graduation? Regarding your honor, the uh, qualifications of uh, the faculty also, your honor. Faculty well, I'm members. talking of the low students. Uh, of the low students. There is no more- the Legal honor. Education principally pertains to the low students and indirectly pertains to the law professors and law teachers. So after graduation, meron ba bang pakialam yung legal education board? Meron pa o wala? There's, uh, there's none, Your Honor. Before enrollment in law school, may pakialam ba yung legal education board? Yes, Your Honor. The admission uh, policy, which is reasonable, Your Honor, for the law schools. But who is powerful? with respect to admission to law school? Is it the Legal Education Board or the law schools? Uh, it's the law schools, Your Honor. But uh, the Legal Education Board will have uh, also, uh, they sh uh, would help also, Your Honor, this uh, law schools. 
So the Legal Education Board can merely supervise, is that what you're saying, for the duration of the legal education, but not interfere, correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. But if it's reasonable, based on the policies of the Legal Education Board, Your Honor, then the law schools need also to comply with it and adhere to the policies of uh, the Legal Education, Your Honor. But supposing the policy is promulgated by the Legal Education Board contradict or militate against academic freedom, are law schools obligated to follow those policies? Uh, it can be... Uh, Legal Education Board needs to have a dialogue, Your Honor, with the Philippine Association of uh, Law Schools, Your Honor, regarding... But I would try, the Legal Education Board will seek an audience with the law schools and try to persuade them to accept their policies. Is that what you're saying? Uh, not necessarily, Your Honor, to accept, but uh, in order for them to uh, um, probably um, make uh, um, a compromise, Your Honor, on the policies that, that they want uh, to establish and to help also, Your Honor, the law schools. Can the Legal Education Board regulate law schools yes your honor they can you're sure <laughs> yes your honor can you give me examples of regulations followed by law schools um regarding uh your honor the uh lsir the one that is being uh, um given or being sub uh, submitted to the legal education board regarding the um the students who enrolled. Also, if the law schools uh, for the past three years have not uh, have uh, got a zero on their passing percentage, um, they can be subject to uh, probably closure, Your Honor, uh, of their existence. Is it constitutional for the Legal Education Board to cause the closure of a law school on the basis of poor performance? They need to uh, visit your honor the law school and check um, the performance and uh, probably they can uh, give um, uh, advices and uh, other uh, um, to solve uh, the problem your honor of that particular law school. But I is that constitutional? Uh, the the lab can close the school because it's not happy with their performance. There is the policy that if the law school will get zero in the three years, um, lab can close it. I think there was already closure of some law schools, Your Honor. There was. I've known that. So you can do that. All right. Uh, that's my last question, uh, <laughs> Attorney Pauline. Uh, thank you for your time and good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor, Justice Tiham. The next interview, Dean Alcuente, is Honorable Judge Toribio E. Ilao Jr. All right, thank you, Attorney Ann Capacite. You're welcome. <laughs> you really have to uh, name your, uh, give like, your complete name, not only Attorney Ann. Para no makilala ka naman ng madlang people. At any rate, yes, uh, still morning. Uh, still morning, uh, Atone Bunyol. How do I pronounce your uh, family name? Bunyol Alfuente, Your Honor. Bunyol. Alfuente. So, so we meet again the last time we interviewed you. And since it's other one, you were applying as an Associate Justice of the Court of Tax Appeals. Yes, That was sure. last, last, yes. last year. Only last year, no? no? November 23, Your Honor. Uh, so, but now you're applying. You're a new applicant. Applying for a legal education board chairperson, regular member representing IBP, regular member representing the ranks of active law practitioners. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, what's your story, Tony Bunyola Fuente? No children? Took the bar three times. 
what's your story Anna? my story your honor i'm in the legal uh, profession your honor uh, and i've been uh, teaching law uh, during uh, the time that i passed the bar and uh, uh, I've been teaching also um, uh, toxic income, uh, taxation, and taxation subjects, Your Honor. And why did you leave your position as Dean of the College of Law of University of Iloilo? The law school, Your Honor, was phased out by uh, the management. So that is the second law school that was phased out by uh, the management of FINMA, Your Honor. When was this? What uh, do you mean by phase out? Uh, they already stopped uh, um, admitting students in 2016. So uh, our, our last batch graduated last year, 2020, Your Honor. They phased out the law school. In 2016? Uh, they started, yes, they started not to admit anymore. So they are facing it out. Actually, there was no, uh, uh, it was not subject to any, uh, uh, um, by the Legal Education Board, it was uh, the decision of the management to close the law school. The first was Araulio University and the second was University of Iloilo. So at present, there is no law school of, in, in the University of Iloilo? Not anymore, Your Honor. Um, why? It's and, uh, mismanagement. Management's decision, Your Honor. It's probably, a management. Yes, management probably decision. it's not uh, earning much and it's not their uh, priority. Well, why uh, not? By the way, who are the stakeholders of uh, University of Iloilo, College of Law then? Uh, these are uh, um, the students uh, coming from uh, um, government uh, agencies and uh, most of them um, cannot uh, go to uh, Manila in order to have a law degree, uh, Your Honor. And most of them are really working. What was then your position at that time? You were the dean? Yes, Your Honor, I was the dean. And what did you learn from taking the bar three times? Uh, it's really difficult because during that time I was a working student and I was not focused on my review. And uh, the second time I took it, uh, my score was 74.99, so I decided to take it again uh, for the third time, Your Honor, and I made it. Probably it's the timing, Your Honor. But uh, I did not stop. Uh, when even I failed, I did not stop to think that uh, I will take the bar again and pass it. What's the reason that you failed in 1999? I was working um, as uh, I am uh, working as a professor of accounting, and I was in the um, basketball association. So I have two jobs, Your Honor, during that. Basket basketball <laughs> association. <laughs> yes, Metropolitan Basketball Association, Iloilo Mega Balls. Uh, during the time of uh, Mon Fernandez. Yes, during okay. the time of Fernandez. You were then what? What was your position in that uh, organization? A manager, I'm the finance, finance manager, Your Honor. Mm. Finance. I'm the one giving them their salaries and bonuses. <laughs> so, by the way, what are your hobbies? What are you uh, habitually engaged in? Uh, I uh, like to sing. I like to go swimming, and I want to travel. And uh, yes, those are the most basic hobbies that I. I also play mahjong. 
ਅਗਲੇ ਮੱਜੋ ਹਾਊ ਮਚ ਆਰ ਦੇ ਵੈਟਸ ਹਾਊ ਮਚ ਐਂਡ ਪੈਸੋਸ ਟੂ 10 ਪੈਸੋਸ ਓਨਲੀ ਜਸਟ ਟੂ ਕੀਪ ਯਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਦੀ ਆਈਡਲ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਰ ਇਟ ਅਥੋਰੀ ਪੌਲਿਨ ਦੈਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਐਨੀ ਰੀਅਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰਟੀ ਨੋ ਯਰ ਓਨਰ you did not declare uh, any property in 2019 i have i we have not we i have none my husband is the only child now so he has uh, more real properties under the name of uh, his uh, parents so tao lang tao pala kaya kaya pala you playing you're just playing with you nga pung <laughs> with him also your own no <laughs> sanggahan kayo ganun <laughs> but where do you reside it's in the place of the the house yes, of your husband yes sir alimudjan iloilo and let, let's go to your salon could you explain the discrepancy in the amount of your cash deposits in banks as stated in your 2019 sal n in, in your pds around 2 million in august 2020 20 per pds while around 272,000 in december 2019 per sal n um during that uh, during the dcc sal your honor i'm a practicing cpa So during that time, even though I'm maintaining my uh, law and accounting office, um, I have the buffer during the time of the filing season that uh, it would uh, uh, have, uh, I have enough funds for the entire year. So during the time up to August. And also during the time, I have already received my redundancy pay, Your Honor. So yeah. that, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> for 11 years, Your Honor. Oh. Uh, so I was redundated. All right. In your application letter, you stated that uh, you are an affiliate of Divina Law, stating yes, that a dynamic law firm in Makati. Why did you say it is a dynamic law firm? It's their tagline, Your Honor. I just copied it, the dynamic law firm. It's already <laughs> just... using it. Uh, but uh, do you believe that uh, Divina Law is a dynamic firm? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Why Your do Honor. you say it's a dynamic room? Because it is engaged in many cases, not only in Manila, but uh, all over the Philippines. And uh, the other affiliates are uh, also uh, uh, the deans and uh, at the same time legal practitioners, Your Honor. Mm. All right. Uh, in your application... Likewise, you state uh, application letter. You stated that your areas of expertise are finance, managerial services, accounting, audit, business development, taxation, corporate, cooperative, and legal practice. How would your expertise help you in the discharge of duties and responsibilities of a legal education board member if appointed? Uh, first, your honor uh, will be the finance uh, because uh, we need the funds. So there should be an allocation given uh, for the funding of uh, the Legal Education Board. Second, your honor, um, probably administration because I, uh, I know how to manage uh, different uh, industries, your honor. And uh, also regarding taxation, So if there will be donation that will be given to the Legal Education Board, then uh, we will uh, take it, Your Honor, to be a, a tax-free donation, Your Honor. Having a trust in business, finance? Yes, Your Honor. No apprehension of being phased out just in case you're going to be appointed? <laughs> no, 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 Your Honor. <laughs> I have to, probably your honor, it's time for me to look into a different, already different career path because um, teaching and uh, education, uh, for legal education, that's uh, 
your honor probably my uh, the the next step for me next level for me okay all right in the case of uh, de la salle university versus court of appeals gr number 127980 december 19 2007 the Supreme Court ruled that the penalty of expulsion is disproportionate to the student's act of causing injuries to another student. Ruling that the university's imposition of penalty should be commensurate with the gravity of the misdeed. The court even went to state that the fact that the mauling incidents lasted only for a few seconds and that the victims did not suffer any serious injury. What are your thoughts on this? I haven't read that case, uh, Your Honor, uh, of uh, De La Salle University. And I'm not aware of uh, the facts, Your Honor, as well as the issue. About in, uh, is it normal for a school to have uh, a policy or rules or regulations in so far as disciplining students, er, or alleged erring students involved in lawless uh, activities. And what are the rules and regulations? What are the standards for it? Uh, there is, uh, your, your Honor, in uh, every law school, there is a handbook for uh, students, Your Honor. So it must be followed by uh, the students, Your Honor, and there is also a handbook for the faculty members, and it must be followed, Your Honor, by the faculty members, Your Honor. So there are rules and regulations uh, being imposed by the school, uh, which uh, are found in the handbooks. And the bottom line is that the rules and regulations must be reasonable. Am I correct? Reasonable? Yes, Your Honor, it should be reasonable. All right, let's go to uh, academic freedom. What are the internal conditions for institutional academic freedom? So there are four um, uh, requirements, Your Honor. First is that um, regarding the school, they should uh, they should have uh, they they should know what will they teach and how it will be taught who will be the faculty that they will hire and uh, the admission or honor of uh, students in their educational institution. That refers to the staff. The staff should have what we call de facto control over four things. Can you mention the four? Come again, come again your honor. De facto control over the admission and examination of students. Can you continue? Regarding the admission, Your Honor, it is an executive uh, function wherein uh, it's up to the school um, who will be admitted based on their admission requirements. So there are um, requirements for the admission. It can be an admission test, interview, and the general weighted average, which is also for for it can be also adapted by the law school, Your Honor. So how about the allocation of income among the different categories of exp expenditure? expenditure? It speaks of allocation of... Uh, for allo the legal... Allocation of income. For the school, Your Honor, or for the yes. education? For the school... Oh, uh, that would be a uh, payment for the compensation of the salaries of uh, the faculty members. And uh, also, um, if uh, scholarships will be granted by the school. And, uh, of course, uh, the expenses for their operations and uh, others, Your Honor. Do you think the Legal Education Board adds value to the legal education? Yes, Your Honor. In what ways? Um, because of uh, its uh, role, Your Honor, the policy um, regarding the uh, 
um, role of the Legal Education Board to uplift the standards of the legal education uh, in order to prepare the law students for uh, their uh, counseling, um, decision making, problem solving, and uh, advocacy, your, uh, your honor. And to, to infuse uh, on these students uh, the ethics of the legal profession and uh, to uh, um, inform them of uh, the importance of uh, the nobility and dignity of the legal profession and to, uh, to uh, in order for the students to know that they are partners uh, in the administration of justice of, uh, of the bench, Your Honor. So that would hone the students, uh, Your Honor, to be prepared to become better and competent and honest lawyers. And even those uh, for who did not uh, make it uh, to the bar, that they will... Uh, use whatever um, that they have learned uh, in their law school, like their advocacy, their counseling, their uh, problem solving and decision making. Is the law passing rate in the bar examinations attributable to law teachers and administrators? Yes, your honor, plus also the quality of students. <laughs> so, <Can> it, <laughs> so it uh, also, uh, the, uh, the quality of the law students can also greatly affect, your honor, um, the passing percentage, your honor. And what will be the palliative measures of uh, uplifting the quality of law teachers as well as the law students? Um, uh, the Legal Education Board uh, shall have a capacity building program in order to uh, have uh, a plan and give this to the, the law schools as well as the law professors as, as well as the students. Um, and uh, the capacity building um, can be adapted and it will take, and there should be also an assessment if uh, the capacity building has been effective for this uh, law, law, law schools, Your Honor, and law students, as well as uh, the faculty of law. All right, the Legal Education Board Memorandum Order Number 17, Series of 2018, requires that a dean of a law school must at least meet the minimum requirements of a Master of Law's degree. What are your thoughts on this? Um, for educational purposes, Your Honor, there should be a master's degree. However, if uh, the dean has an experience, um, which would uh, which uh, the master is uh, degree is uh, really um, can be uh, finished in just two years, so th there is a difference uh, uh, regarding the experience of the dean who has been in the academic institution for a decade, Your Honor. So, but uh, since uh, it is a requirement, it must be uh, complied with also, Your Honor. Any master, not necessarily law, 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 law master? Uh, it should be also, Your Honor, master's degree, uh, an LLM, Your Honor. What are the purposes of the Legal Education Board? Briefly, and uh, uh, to uh, to train the students in order for them to pass the bar, and uh, during the time that they will be uh, working in a private or a public institution, also uh, in order for them to. Uh, be trained in leadership, and uh, so that they will be ha they will have uh, the capacity and advocacy for problem solving, decision making, and uh, they will be uh, considered uh, a uh, an assistance also in the um, administration of uh, justice, and uh, um, they will be uh, they will be. Uh, 
involved in research, Your Honor, and uh, other uh, scholarships that will be given uh, to them. In line with this, uh, how do you intend to carry out such purpose, purposes? Or what are the reforms you have in mind, if and when uh, you are appointed? The important, uh, the important revision would be to have uh, a secretariat for the Legal Education Board because there are no uh, administrative, uh, um, it is not, it does not have an admin, admin uh, officers or staff in order to manage it. I think uh, most of, uh, most of the, their uh, um, employees are just uh, contract or job orders, Your Honor. There is no finance. There is no uh, um, uh, legal and the policy making and those in charge of uh, the regulations for uh, legal education purposes as well as uh, allocation coming from uh, the the government for a seed money for uh, for the legal education board. And my last question, uh, Attorney Pauline. When was the last time you failed at something? Describe it. Miscarriage? What? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just joking. <laughs> or frustrated na sa madyong baka... <laughs> Nag-ambisyon ka mo kaya hindi naunahan ka ng pung. Oh. Uh, regarding the closure of uh, the College of Law of uh, UI, Your Honor. So, uh, um, we were tasked to have a higher passing percentage by the admin up to the maximum of 80%, which uh, for, for, for me, it's really, really too high uh, to be obtained. Um, mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's uh, my failure, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. That was my last and final question. And uh, good luck. Sana suerte in kasalaro. All right, I, I'm done, uh, Justice uh, thank Mendoza. You. Thank you so much, uh, Your Honor, Judge Ilao. The last to interview, Dean Alfuente, is Honorable Justice Jose Catral Mendoza. Okay. Mendoza. Thank you, Attorney Ann. Uh, good morning or good noon, uh, Attorney Alfuente. Good noon, Justice. Uh, I'm adopting the questions uh, posed by my colleagues, and I have some questions of my own. Uh, you have read the case of Pimentel versus uh, the Legal Education Board. Yes, Your Honor. You know, the, the decision there is not yet final. There are several, uh, there are several uh, uh, motions for reconsideration filed. And up to now, the ponente has retired up to now, it's, they're still pending there. Now, uh, can you summarize what was the ruling in that case? What were declared constitutional? What were <coughs> declared unconstitutional? Um, what has been declared unconstitutional is the administration of the Philippine Law School Admission Test, Your Honor. So, uh, and also regarding the uh, regarding the uh, the master's degree for the faculty and for the dean uh, that uh, pertains to uh, the. Um, Lab uh, memorandum order, Your Honor, and the, the others um, regarding uh, memorandum order um, one twenty eleven. Um, some of it are considered uh, 
most of it are considered constitutional, Your Honor. So the issue uh, here really is regarding the uh, Philippine Law School Admission Exam. Okay. Uh, there were two, two provisions which were declared constitutional. What were they? What are they? The uh, Republic Act, which uh, established the Legal Education Board, Your Honor, RH 22, Your Honor, and uh, um, the whole the whole law. Uh, those uh, which uh, did not uh, have an issue regarding the uh, um, practice of law, Your Honor, and uh, the admission of uh, students, Your Honor. I'll be specific. Uh, declared as constitutional were Section 7C of the uh, RA 7662 and Section 7E. What is Section 7C? Why was it declared constitutional? What was the power of the Legal Education Board there? Regarding the to uh, to uplift your honor the standards of uh, the legal education to prepare um, the law students uh, for advocacy. Uh, counseling, problem solving, and uh, decision making um, in order for them to aid in the administration of justice and that the, they will develop uh, social competence and uh, uh, also to maintain the quality of uh, the uh, um, law schools, your honor. So these are considered as constitutional. The power to set the standards of accreditation, you meant? Accreditation and admission, Your Honor. And admission. And what is the other? What is the other? Other one? What power was declared constitutional? The power to regulate your honor, the law schools. It's very, that's very general. Section 7 is the power to prescribe the minimum requirements for admission to legal education and min minimum qualifications of faculty members. Okay? Do you know the case of Tablarin versus Gutierrez? Regarding, uh, I think, Your Honor, when I read the case of Pemekan, it's about the NMAT. Yes, NMAT. Oh. What was the ruling in Tablarin? The NMAT, Your Honor, is constitutional. So, it, uh, however, uh, pertaining to the admission, it will be the medical school who will have... Uh, the admission requirements, which will also integrate the results of uh, the NMAT, but uh, the uh, medical school can have a higher uh, passing percentage uh, of uh, NMAT in order for the uh, student, medical student, to be admitted, Your Honor. Can it have lower standard? Uh, I haven't. Uh, I'm not sure, Your Honor, if they can have a lower standard. So it would be like FILSAP, raising the standard, admission standard. So essentially, there were three reasons given uh, in uh, reasons why NMAT was declared constitutional and FILSAP, some provisions were declared not constitutional. What were the three? Uh, regarding the NMAT. Regarding the NMAT, Your Honor, um, it is uh, 
not done by uh, the government. So it is, uh, I think, a medical council which uh, uh, had the, which initiated the the end matter owner. They are they are the ones uh, who are in charge of uh, the end mat. And like uh, Phil said, it is with the, the legal education board, your honor. And for the passing percentage, the grades of those who took the end mat are just uh, being placed there, and uh, it will not be a control in order for them to be admitted to the medical school. While while for Philsat, the passing percentage is 55. So if the uh, the one who took the Philsat will not be able to get the average of 55, he will no longer be admitted in the law school, Your Honor, in any law school. Okay. What else? What are, what is the other reason? Uh, feels that is not reasonable, Your Honor, um, uh, because of uh, the control that it will be them who will have the control uh, in order for uh, the prospective law student to be uh, uh, admitted in the, the law school. What is uh, wrong with the lab uh, having control? Regarding academic freedom, Your Honor, that it violated academic freedom, that uh, it should be uh, the, the law schools that will have uh, the, the, the right to admit uh, students, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what is the constitutional provision on academic freedom? Uh, the constitutional provision for academic freedom um, pertains to uh, um, pertains to the school as well as to the faculty uh, members, Your Honor, that they can uh, they have the right uh, for the school they have the right uh, who to. Uh, the, I'm asking the constitutional provision. What is the constitutional provision regarding uh, academic freedom? Uh, regarding the higher um, higher education institutions. Well, it's very easy. Uh, academic freedom shall be enjoyed in all institutions of higher learning. Yun lang nakalagay dun eh. Now, is there a constitutional definition of academic freedom? There is none, Your Honor, but uh, in case... Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, if there is none, how, what is your understanding of academic freedom? What are its parameters? Academic freedom not only entails to the institutions, but as well as to the faculty um, members, uh, the teachers, as well as uh, the students. So uh, uh, the faculty members can teach whatever they they want to teach, provided that they believe in that uh, particular um, teaching of them, uh, and they can publish uh, books and uh, reports without uh, uh, being uh, uh, subject to criticism. In a, in a pimental, uh... The, the standard set by or mentioned by Justice Frankfurter was stated. What were those four standards? The first uh, standard is who will teach, yes. what will be taught, how yes. will it be taught, and uh, who to admit, Your Honor. I see, okay. So in uh, in the case, it is said that uh, now with these parameters as limitations, what can you do as a member of the of the legal education board? What can you do? You are already 
uh, you are uh, limited in this regard, in these four aspects. Um, the, the law, uh, Your Honor, um, must be revised okay, regarding the establishment of the Legal Education Board. And uh, uh, the issue more here is regarding FILSAT. So, no, in your, uh, in your case, you're aspiring to be a chairman or a member of the Legal Education Board. What can you do without uh, transgressing the academic freedom of a school? There is an association, Your Honor, um, of uh, yes, you, law You yourself, what is your plan? What do you plan to do if you're elected, uh, appointed chairman or members of the board? These are the parameters. Uh, the, the school uh, enjoy ample discretion to decide for itself who may teach, what may be taught, how it shall be taught, and whom to admit. Now, those are the limitations, right? Because uh, they cover, they con uh, uh, they are what you call the parameters of academic freedom. Now, you are appointed. What will? You, what can you suggest without uh, transgressing this academic freedom? Um, we need to, regarding your honor the the, yes. the fields. Uh, um, no, the in your case, in your case, if you are yes. uh, 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 if you are a, if you are appointed chairman or a member of the lab, what will you propose? There should be a technical working group, Your Honor, for regarding the admission requirements. So it must be uh, um, that the, the the law schools must uh, uh, have. Uh, no, its, suppose uh, there is still no there is still no technical working group. What will you personally suggest? Do you have any plans? In mind, knowing the limitations of your power. Uh, revisions must be made, Your Honor, to the law which establishes the legal education. That board. is uh, that pertains to Congress. Yes, Your Honor. Now, as a member of the a chairman or member of the board, what can you do without transgressing academic freedom? Uh, make policies your honor and uh, have a consultation. Oh, like, like, like what? What policy can you uh, suggest? Uh, uh, also for the admission requirements and retention policies that will be made by the law schools, your honor, because they will be the one who will admit the, the prospective law students, your honor. So there should be a dialogue or there should be a, um, a planning um, on how to uh, have that uh, policy making. And also there should be a capacity building that will be uh, um, made um, uh, together with the, the law schools. And uh, there should be a model curriculum and a model syllabus. Uh, and uh, there should be a plan on the part of the Legal Education Board um, uh, a plan for the next five years and uh, there should be a vision must be established by uh, the legal education board for i i don't think that there is a vision plus the admin uh, of uh, the said agency your honor um, according to versus uh, leb the state in its exercise of reasonable supervision and regulation over education can only impose minimum regulation. What is your, uh, your understanding of minimum regulation? What is the standard? What are the parameters? Oh. Come again, Your Honor. I was uh, cut off, Your Honor. I just went uh -huh. back here. 
there's problem with my internet connection. I'm sorry. So I'll repeat the question again. Incremental yes, versus slip. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir, Honor. I can uh, hear you. Now. Incremental versus slip. It was stated that the state in the exercise of reasonable supervision and regulation over education can only impose minimum regulations. Now, what are the parameters of a minimum regulation? What is the standard? How do you determine if such is an acceptable minimum regulation? Is there a test? Your Honor, I cannot hear. Sorry, um, there is a problem mm -hmm. with the my connection. Your Honor, come again, please. Mm -hmm. Attorney mm -hmm. Al Fuente, yes. Um, do you have um, your Honor permission to yes, address the no. Attorney Al Fuente, secondary device. Yes, yes, Justice. Oh. Or you may use your earphones if you have okay. earphones. So you can hear just endorse uh, clearly. Attorney Alfonte, can you hear me, Paul? Uh, cut, cutting off po kayo, Attorney. Um, Janice, can we check the internet bandwidth uh, signal of attorney Loba? Um, from our end, po, your internet signal is okay. So, can yes. you hear me now? Okay, yes, Paul. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you, attorney. Your Honor, Justice Mendoza. Oh. Uh, okay, no, po, okay, okay. Incremental versus lab. No. It was stated that the state in the exercise of its reasonable supervision and regulation over education can only impose minimum regulations. What is your understanding of minimum regulation? What are its parameters? Is there a test to determine what are uh, minimum regulations? Tony? Um, For the, the test uh, uh, on, uh, on the parameters, um, it should uh, there should be a uh, uh, le lab would uh, will consider other aspects. So it will not just uh, be the one who will have the control in the implementation of its policy. I'm asking about minimum requirements uh, without transgressing. Without imposing or transgressing the minim minimum regulations, Acad I mean to say, without transgressing academic freedom, it can only impose minimum regulations. So my question is, what is the understanding of the minimum regulations? What are its parameters? What is the test to determine the minimum regulations? It must be reasonable, Your Honor. It must be reasonable um, to implement the said policies. So that is the minimum uh, uh, regulation. Uh, can you give me an example? Regarding your honor, the uh, uh, those law schools that have uh, problems uh, in their uh, rating for the passing percentage, your honor, um, that uh, they will be uh, given uh, sanctions if uh, uh, there will be a couple of years or two two years that uh, they have a rating uh, of zero for the bar examination, your honor. And uh, there is a okay. chance here on zero in the bar examination. That okay. What else? Um, regarding your honor, the clinical legal education program, wherein um, uh, Deb is uh, uh, 
helping the law schools um, to establish uh, the, the legal uh, clinic and uh, together with uh, another uh, foundation, Your Honor, that is helping um, the Legal Education Board. Those are only the things you can uh, think, uh, minimum regulations. It can be also your anyway, uh, You said that, for example, uh, can you expound on what you stated that, uh, for example, the school for two straight years, uh, uh, had no passing student in the bar. What did you mean by that? Uh, there is a policy, uh, LEBMO, um, made by the Legal Education Board that uh, sanctions uh, will be made for those schools having uh, uh, zero passing percentage. And I think there is a mentor mentoring uh, um, done by them in order for the law schools to have a uh, 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 positive or uh, a uh, passing percentage for the bar exams, which uh, they already uh, did, Your Honor. It has not been questioned. No, no, no. Is it not violation of academic freedom because uh, it covers uh, how it shall be taught? There is a uh, also a policy uh, um, requirement, uh, Your Honor, um, and uh, I think Deb is helping this uh, law schools. Uh, and uh, I'm, I've known uh, one that had the passing percentage for the past two years of zero, and there was a mentorship, mentoring done by the Legal Education Board. And uh, for the last uh, 2019 bar, they obtained a positive, pa uh, they obtained a passing percentage, Your Honor. So I think it's uh, doing well. But there are uh, sanctions, Your Honor. Also, um, Regarding what the, is your view on contracts between the school and the student when a student uh, enrolls in a school? What is the nature of such contract? That the school uh, shall provide uh, a, a good education, Your Honor, to the student, but the student has also the responsibility ability to uh, perform his obligations and duties uh, as a uh, student. So it's uh, both ways, Your Honor, so it cannot be just for the school alone, but as well as for the students. Is it a semester-to-semester -semester contract or until uh, the student uh, has uh, finished the course? Uh, it will be, there is a curriculum here, also, so it will be until the student will still enroll in order to finish uh, the, the course, Your Honor. But if the student will not anymore enroll, then the contract, Your Honor, is uh, terminated. But since the start of uh, the course, then it would be for, supposed to be for the entire uh, duration of the course that the student will have to finish the same Okay, um, because what was the reason given by the Supreme Court in the case of Isabella versus Perpetual Health College? I'm sorry, Your Honor, I haven't uh, read it. I have not read it. Oh. Yes, Your Honor. It's not an ordinary contract, but a contract imbued with public interest. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, that will be all. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Very much, uh, that will be all. Thank you, Your Honor. Your excuse. That concludes the public panel interview of Dean Pauline Grace P. Buñol Alfuente. Thank you very much and Godspeed, Dean Alfuente. Your Honors, the Council's morning session is now closed. We shall have a break and resume at the uh, 2.30.